If you ever wanted front row seats living in a dystopic science fiction dream world, you've got them. If you ever wanted front row seats for the fall, the second fall, the great fall of humanity, you've got them. The, uh, the illogic of the propaganda coming out of the establishment media creating absolute abject division in this nation is so transparent, is so weaponized, is so nasty, and it then just generates a nasty response from the so-called other side and the clash of civilizations that the globalists use in different permutations, in different combinations across this world to keep humanity in ignorant squalor. There is so much news to cover. A lot of it really exciting, a lot of it really positive, a lot of it horrifying. In fact, I know I mentioned it yesterday, but you guys reprint me Paul Joseph Watson's article that links to the Chinese People's Daily, where uh, the Chinese president says prepare for war with the United States and that it could be imminent. I know that's two day old news, but I've got all these hundreds of news articles in front of me and they're important. And I'm sitting back thinking, what am I gonna cover first? Because I don't cover first what I think will get the ratings or what I think is the most popular topic. Sometimes I do if I think it's interesting. I, I tend to focus on what I think is really most important. Look at that headline, if you're a TV viewer. Chinese president orders People's Liberation Army to prepare for combat. Beijing vows to ignore ruling of international tribunal on South China Sea. Jiang Zeping, if that's how I pronounce it, has ordered the People's Liberation Army to prepare for combat as a massive fleets basically on both sides build up in the area. He says as a measure against possible Hostile U.S. action in the South China Sea after an international tribunal ruled that Beijing had no exclusive control of the area. And yes, people can point out there are Chinese maps going back a thousand years ago that claim some of those islands. I mean, I can show you maps Genghis Khan had you know, claiming you know, all of the old world. The point is, is there's a bunch of other countries in the area. It's an international shipping lane, and China is now expanding control into that area. And they had a deal with the Anglo-American establishment that they would be given the Panama Canal. They would be given basically exclusive control over manufacturing uh, household goods and, and, and crap, but also a lot of electronics, and that they had uh, an exclusive over rare earth minerals as part of the globalist system of dividing up power into different sectors and then playing it off against each other. But now as we get towards the end game of world government, you notice the double crossing is going into the stratosphere. They're launching huge space programs. They're weaponizing space. They are copying uh, U.S. weapons technologies. They are selling it to enemies. And some folks will say, well, then who's bad and who's good? Our government's bad and so is the Chinese government. And it's rapidly deteriorating very, very, very quickly. And here's a headline. War is coming, and the global financial situation is a lot worse than you may think. The conditions for a perfect storm are coming together very rapidly. Michael Schneider writes for Economic Collapse blog. It's at InfoWars.com. It's not just Schneider saying it. He links to all the top analysts saying this. Meanwhile, I turn on the television or just read the newspaper. I can't get away from it. We have to cover it. It's, it's like half the website. Are all these uh, social change globalist disinformation operatives out just beating the drum for class warfare with a nice icing of idiotic racism? It's the 14th day of July, 2016, on this live Global Thursday broadcast. I intend to open the phones up and take a lot of calls today. And one of my favorite investigative journalists, James O'Keefe of Project Veritas, will be joining us. He's had several big coups as of late, uh, burrowing inside an anti-gun congressman's meeting uh, where some uh, very interesting information was discovered about these hypocrites. He'll be popping in 
for 30 minutes in the second hour. Anthony Gucciardi will host the fourth hour of Overdrive. If you're tuning in to us on a local AM or FM station, uh, please spread the word about this wonderful affiliate, and please don't take it for granted uh, that they're willing to put information on the air, post on the air, that are actually defending this republic in some of its uh, most uh, dangerous uh, hours. It's also important to note, we simulcast the radio show at infowars.com forward slash show, where anyone can find the free video feed, the free podcast feeds later uh, after each show that are sent out. So you can subscribe to that for free. Uh, the iPhone apps, all of it, and a lot more. And the audio streams, infowars.com forward slash show. We're going to be finding out, obviously, very, very soon about Trump's VP. And I have talked to a lot of big pollsters who are doing private polls to actually really gauge what's going on, not just political polls paid for, uh, to find out uh, what the candidate wants to hear so they can then put that back out to the public and create a self-fulfilling prophecy. But I will tell you, Trump is not in this uh, realm. Uh, Trump, just like he's not taking big money from the establishment, is not paying for push polls where you call up and basically have the questions arranged so that it makes it more opportunistic, makes it sound more moral uh, to be for one candidate or the other. Or polls that basically ask you questions that are so horrible about a candidate uh, that it turns you against them. It's a way to put disinfo out there and say basically, did you know that Donald Trump was convicted of rape, which isn't true, but you're company calls up and asks that question uh, and says, are you aware of it? Uh, and then uh, it starts rumors. I mean, there's all sorts of dirty tricks uh, that they can do with these systems. They can also pre-program them so that when they call you, even though you vote one way, it votes another. But the biggest thing they do is they have a list of people that have been polled before, and then they have these so-called phone lists that they claim are clean, and they call them and it's predominantly old landlines, so it's older folks. Uh, and they can be basically guided into answering the questions the way they want. Then the national news can put that information out. And it creates uh, the perception that Hillary Clinton is really ahead when she's not. Then weak-minded people who just want to feel like they're on a bandwagon uh, and voting for the winner so they can have bragging rights, go ahead and vote for Hillary. So that's basically the corrupt form of polling. The real form of polling is to see how your message is getting out in a particular area, a particular demographic, a particular voting block, a particular state, a particular region, so that you can tweak your messaging to see what is more effective. It's a, it's a guidance system. And Facebook and Google have admitted that they're pledged uh, to getting Hillary elected and to mobilizing as many young people and other Internet users as they can to do that by the news by uh, the search engine queries, by the crafting uh, of headlines about how they direct you, where they direct you. The fix is totally in at a level never before seen. And Google and Facebook and Twitter and Apple and Microsoft, uh, just the entire establishment is lined up against Donald Trump. And all the big money is lined up against him and the mainstream media is lined up against him and almost all the foreign leaders from the communist Chinese to the corrupt Saudi Arabians, to the corrupt Mexican leadership, they are all A-L-L -L, lined up against Trump. It, it is just such a no-brainer that he's the guy to vote for. But, but separately from that, Rasmussen poll, Trump takes seven-point lead over Hillary. We're going to be getting into that report. Also, and I, I told you two weeks ago, multiple polls show him seven points ahead. And it's not just Rasmussen, but I'm not at liberty to talk about it because those are private internal polls. There's actually some thought in the Trump campaign that they don't want to put out too positive a news or the troops will stop fighting as hard. And then Hillary can pull some scams down the road. And we're going to lose the whole ball game. Just because we're, you know, one touchdown ahead. It's not even halftime yet, folks. I, but that's the allegory. That's the analogy. We're seven points ahead. Seven points ahead 
and we're going into halftime next week. And then, boom, it's into the third and fourth quarter. It is on. This is it. And it's all accelerated in those last three months. First two quarters is a year and a half. And then it all compresses like a quickening or a singularity in those last few months. Get ready because you're going to see the dirty tricks. You're going to see the, the, the stops being pulled out here. But I really want to say to the Bernie Sanders supporters, I really want to say to just the general public at large, how could you not be for Trump? You know the big banks are totally against him. Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Warren Buffett, Wells Fargo. These are the big banks that launder the drug money on record. These are the people that run the whole show. These are the people that fund the open borders, that fund coming after our guns, that fund breaking up the family and all these disinformation campaigns and, and third wave feminism and all of it. I mean, you go look at who's financing all of it. Bringing in the, quote, refugees. It's, it's all the same totally cold-blooded multinationals that if you see what they do in Africa and Latin America and places, I mean, it's slavery. But here they fund all this fake, gooey, modern neoliberalism that is cyanide. Donald Trump is like defibrillators on a country that's had a heart attack. It's electricity. It's dangerous. He could turn into a megalomaniac and, and take us in directions. Who knows? I mean, I can speculate all day, but the evil that's running things is scared to death of him, for real. Because he's a nationalist. He's exposing the globalist campaign, the Saudi Arabians role in 9-11. He's exposing how China's bought off our politicians and giving speeches that no one covered. They would not show any clips of what he said other than five seconds long. It was so historic, I had tears in my eyes. I'm not trying to go off into a Trump love fest here, but that's just a fact. If you want to read some of the ways they manipulate polls, there's a Zero Hedge article we have posted on Infowars.com from ZeroHedge.com. More questions emerge about skewed Hillary polls. You can really see the skewing because they'll have all these other independent scientific ones that show Trump dead even or ahead. And then all of these other polls just show her like just massively ahead, you know, 10, 12 points, 9 points. It's just total bull. I mean, look at that photo you just had on screen of, of her supporters. I mean, arrested development, vapid, stupid looking. And there's this wicked alpha predator. Just flaming evil with a list of crimes behind her and, 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 and wreckage that is just unbelievable. And they love the gimmick, she's a woman. It's just truly sickening. Truly sickening. Meanwhile, there's a new video we're going to be playing coming up. Hillary Goon attacks elderly woman holding Bernie Sanders sign at a unity rally. He comes up and attacks her. That's how they operate. They've blocked our aircraft. Never been done before for the entire four days. They're doing it five days out, actually. So, so a day early, five days of the convention, oh, 30-mile exclusion zone. Never been done before in Cleveland and in Philadelphia. So we're going to be looking at all of that. Uh, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, who you know is an ultra-massive critic of George W. Bush, total credibility. He's come out and said, Gestapo America, Adolf Hitler is alive and well in the United States, and he is fast rising to power. And it gets into the FBI, the Democrats, the Republicans, all of it. I mean, the establishment is together. They're different in name only. The Republican establishment hates Trump. I mean, you line up every enemy of this country, every evil group. The people that put in the racist minimum sentencing that, 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 that targets blacks particularly. There's even statements from Hillary and Bill about blacks are super predators. Blacks uh, need to be made to heal like a dog. But it's okay, because the media said Donald Trump's a racist. He's a racist. And speaking of that, the weaponized ignorance of the entire MTV, CBS, ABC, CNN, fiction, nonfiction, the universities, the high schools, everywhere, pulling out the stops to create total hysteria. An Obama meeting for three hours yesterday 
with the head of Black Lives Matter. He doesn't meet with foreign leaders for three hours behind closed doors after a photo op to plan the summer of rage. And speaking of that, be aware, but not there. We'll have our crew there tomorrow. Day of rage scheduled for July 15th. That's tomorrow. 2016, we'll tell you about that. And now there's the new talking point. And when I say this, I want you to understand, I don't say this to be shocking or for rhetoric or because there's a small connection. What is now being announced by Obama through Black Lives Matter in the UN is State Department Memorandum 7277 and public law. We're printing all that off right now. I want to show that to you when we come back. This is actually a U.S. government plan for world government through the U.N. from 1962. Freedom from War is the name of it. Alex Jones here back live. We have breaking campaign 2016 news. We're going to have Roger Stone on tomorrow. Hopefully 20 or 30 minutes before the actual announcement of who it really is. And I'm not saying it isn't Pence. Uh, to uh, hopefully give us the first scoop. But we did tell you a few weeks ago that he had been the front runner, but that uh, Senator Sessions has tried to bow out himself. Trump may crazily still try to pick him. That was the way it was told to me by another insider. But they're really going to dig up the Alabama stuff. And did he ever go to some meeting, you know, where there's 200 people and there's Klan guys there? And boom, they'll just go to town with that. Hillary Clinton, her mentor can be a grand dragon. That's okay. But regardless, uh, the word is, this is up on DrudgeReport.com from Roll Call. You're hired. Trump picks Pence. Trump to pick Mike Pence says source. And I do not think that is one of the best choices. It's a lot better than Newt Gingrich. Because let me tell you, as much as I dislike Hillary and everything, if he would have picked Genrich, or if he does pick Genrich, I, I, and Genrich, by the way, is attacking Trump today, which as soon as I saw that this morning, it's like, hallelujah. Because he just can't help but backbite. That's just how he is. And if, if, if he puts Genrich too close to him, he's crazy. I mean, it's one strategy to keep your enemies closer. I get that. I'm going to give Trump the benefit of the doubt until I see what he starts delivering on, like getting our jobs back, like defending our sovereignty. So there's different strategies out there. It's just that um, time will have to tell. Donald Trump is planning to announce that Indiana Governor Mike Pence is his choice for his vice presidential running mate. And of course, he had a meeting in private with four of the guys yesterday there in Indiana, according to a Republican with direct knowledge of the decision. As Trump narrowed in on his choice of Pence, the two men spent time at both Trump's golf resort in New Jersey in early July and at the Indiana governor's mansion this week. That's right. In addition to testing the men's chemistry, Trump also reportedly impressed with Pence's calm demeanor, his experience on Capitol Hill as and as a governor, and Pence's potential to assist Trump in governing should the ticket win in November. The announcement will be made publicly at an event at Trump Tower at 11 a.m. Friday morning. In addition to Pence, Trump has considered former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, Army General Michael Flynn, the number two spots on his ticket. Some contenders include Senator Bob Corker. Yeah, that was never the case. Corker went to him of Tennessee, and it goes on from there. So we'll see. We will see. All I know is Hillary Clinton is seven points behind in a new scientific Rasmussen poll. And a whole other index of polls that are up on Infowars.com showing that he's pulled ahead three to four points in almost every poll except for the polls being put out by Democratic Party pollsters or affiliated media groups. And you can write a poll and ask the questions however you want. You can use the demographics who you called. I already talked about that, but I tell you, you can really see how the establishment's going to strike back. And I'm going to tie all this together when we come back from break here in a few minutes to the original Rand Corporation slash U.S. government Carnegie Endowment for Peace program. You want to know where the U.N. comes from? Want to understand why all this is happening? Want to understand Obama's youth brigades and, and what Black Lives Matter is? This is a sh shaping of things to come. 
and where this country is going to go. And so I'm going to break it down as calmly as I can without getting upset why it's such a travesty and a tragedy what's happening. But you want to see the political takeover of America? This is what it is by the offshore conglomerates. Now, before I go any further, because I want to plunge right into this when we come back from break, uh, we are ending the special today, and it will end. We already extended it, expanded it, and then contracted it to just storable food uh, that's excellent, high quality, best price out there, and to the nutraceuticals, but upwards of 40, up to 40% off. It's not like a few of the things are 40% off. A lot of the food's 40% off. 20 to 40% off, bare minimum 20%, 10% off all the nutraceuticals, 25% off DNA Force, our flagship product. We only do that every once in a while, and it sells out quickly. That's going to end today. The, 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 the DNA Force is going to extend out. That's our new sale. But the other sale ends today on the storable food and the 10% off across the board on nutraceuticals. You can get an additional 10% off on anything you sign up for auto ship on and free shipping on orders of $50 or more at InfoWarsStore.com. I want to thank you all for your support, but you really are getting high-quality items here, whether it's books, videos, T-shirts, uh, whether it's uh, shortwave radios or non-GMO seeds. We try to find the very best stuff out there at the lowest price. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com. Stay with us. All right, I want to just succinctly give you the facts, not rhetoric, not hype, but reality. For so long, the liberty movement has warned about a world government UN takeover that even though it's now here and now happening, I'll have somebody on like Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, former head of the Treasury Department, father of Reaganomics, and I'll say, you know, this is six months ago, hey, did you see the Associated Press and Breitbart and everybody? The Attorney General just met and says, the, the, the new Attorney General at the time, Loretta Lynch, she just uh, met with government leaders from around the country, and they're going to set up UN offices to oversee human rights in every U.S. city with federal funding. And he goes, oh, Alex, the UN doesn't run anything. Let's get back to the war with China or whatever he was talking about. And see, I respect him. I I'm not arguing or debating. It's all perspective. He's absolutely right that it's Washington and the European globalist and the UK globalists that run the Anglo-American establishment. And they're the big families and the power brokers. And the UN is a U.S. puppet. And it gets 50% of its funding from the U.S. And the Rockefeller and Rothschild families gave basically 100% of the money to found it. I've had the experts on. I've read the congressional reports that Anthony Sutton put together. The Carnegie Endowment for Peace runs the whole show. But you have to understand, when the rubber meets the road, it is a U.N. takeover. The globalists need to create a new government that they can transfer our powers to away from the people, away from the states, and then have it come back in with the stirred up angry populations mad at what the globalists are doing here. And then here comes the good cop, the UN to save everyone, the IMF, the World Bank. That's what this is. Just like the TPP, 10 years being secretly prepared, Congress not allowed to see it, Lawsuits get filed, so for a few months, you can go into a room with tens of thousands of pages and different drafts and look at one page at a time and no notes. How did Congress get in the position where they're told by some shadowy group, we don't even know who, that, okay, you can look at it one piece of paper at a time. That isn't just world government. It's totally draconian, secretive and over the top. Will you guys cue up Obama talking about a domestic security force just as big, just as strong? It's 23 seconds. So, so many times I sit here jumping to pieces of evidence trying to prove it to you. And I'm still going to do that neurotically. But at a certain point, I've done a lot of videos, I notice, and reports that are really popular. Where I just show one article with some links and then just tell you what's going on instead of like, and look at this and look at that and read this quote. See, they really are doing it. Look, you know they're really doing it, okay? They really did Obamacare. The White House 
sent Obama to Dallas two days ago. And he actually, he actually got up there for like 15 minutes and said, oh, we're really sorry. You know, you know, it's never okay to kill cops. But I tell you, we're really a racist, horrible country. And we got to reform the police and it's blah, 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 blah. Just adding support to this whole movement and every corporate media outlet pushing it and every globalist computer outfit pushing it and foreign governments pushing it and the UN coming and having meetings and advising and filing lawsuits and running the refugee program. It's happening. And I've got stacks of news every day now where the UN is running all of this. It's the consortium that sets the curricula for the public schools and the colleges. UNESCO, it sets the global standards for light bulbs, toilets, and then we just adopt it. How cold your thermostat can go, how hot your hot tub can get. I, I mean, we haven't implemented all this yet. Some countries have. Germany has banned the new construction of single family dwellings saying we don't want families to be alone. That's a cult. We want you in a big building. I first saw that in German newspapers like six, seven years ago. People didn't believe it. It's now in place. And now it's coming here. I remember 10 years ago when they were banning space heaters and outdoor heaters and fireplaces all over Europe. People laughed. It's now happening in the United States. I'd tell you five years ago about coffin part apartments that are going to be 225 square feet, but you pay more for them. Less for more money. People didn't believe it. Now, many of the new buildings being built in Austin are 200, 300 square foot. Folks, they mean business, okay? Business. We're following a global, I'm getting chills right now, a total global government program meant to shut resources off incrementally till you're totally dependent, and then they're going to start killing everybody with bioweapons. But they're just getting us sick right now and getting us ready for it. And that's why people want me to at least pay lip service. Like, I've been told privately, you ought to be nicer to Black Lives Matter and, you know, say some nice things like you care and all this. I'm not, of course I care. I'm not going to sit here and play lip service. You understand? You need to slap up beside your freaking head. I don't care if you're white, whatever damn color you are. Excuse me. Said I'm not going to get mad. I am so angry lately. We are under scientific attack. We're under medical attack. They're geoengineering, spending tens of billions a year. The plants are dying all over the northern hemisphere. Aluminum levels, in some cases, are 50 times what they were 20 years ago. The globalist scientists won a Nobel Prize in 1992 for the plan they implemented in 1996. It's not funny. You know, e either social justice warriors either laugh at these warnings or they, or they just ignore it and move on to, did you hear two more black guys got shot last week? Yeah, did you hear 50,000 ba black babies got killed? I mean, just, do you understand what a joke that is? You got a mosquito biting you. Meanwhile, they got your head in a guillotine, and you're bitching about the mosquito. It's a total diversion. And I sit here watching it done scientifically, having all the proof, all the documents, their whole plan, Telling people what to go read, what to go look at for yourself. The U.S. law, U.S. Code, Title 50, Chapter 32, Subsection 1520A, Paragraph B. And then people go read it and don't even know what they're saying. They go, Alex, this says they can't do secret testing on us. Unless it's for law enforcement or research purposes, including lethal. It's on the books. They can kill us. You're like, well, wait a minute. You said the cops are our friends, but they're allowed to kill us. It's for at the top law enforcement purposes. Your enemy is not the average cop down the street that's just as compartmentalized as you are. <sighs> yeah, I said I was going to walk through this. I was going to take your calls. Excuse me. See, I try to not think about this stuff all the time. It's one, I really, it, just the ignorance, the, 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 the mind control, the enemy winning makes me sick to my stomach and to know where all this is going and to know the institutional division it's creating 
and then they'll have this whole politically correct system to fix it, which is a cult attacking words and language and independent free thought. It is just so incredibly over the top obvious. And one level, this is incredibly exciting and entertaining, though. I mean, we're living in a science fiction movie with an elite who believe they're going to merge the machines and become God and who believe we're obsolete and are planning an organized, clean way to kill everybody off. Wow. That's more entertaining than Moonraker, isn't it? Written by MI6. Getting a little taste of what's on the drawing board. <laughs> the big mega banks, the royal houses, the royal families. I was looking at it this morning. Will you guys Google uh, the royal families the world meet? And it shows less than 30 heads of state. And you look at them, and I know what a lot of those families own. I mean, you're looking at folks that own more than half the world's wealth. And then the robber baron, new royalty, less than 30 families. And you look at them, and they're above the law. Their 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 wealth is a state secret. They're tax exempt, and everyone kisses their butt. The oldest dynasty is the Japanese. Six hundred and sixty BC, still in charge today. I got to do a report on that. You just type into Google, royal families of the world meet, royal families of the world gather. I have it here on my phone. I was looking at it earlier today. I can pull it up for TV viewers. It's right here. Look at this. Here, give me a document cam shot. Look at that. I was doing research on the Japanese and British royals and all the little secretive meetings that are going on. This photo came up. Pull it up, guys. There. Anyways, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just give you the places to look. And if media folks out there don't get upset about this, you think it's cute, you think it's funny, you think, oh, the public's all dumb, so what? Let's just go along with the elite or whatever. You deserve what happens to you because I'm going to tell everybody something right now. And I'm going to tell especially the rich people. And they're of every race, color, and creed. The people that think you're established because you got $10 million in the bank and live in a mansion. Or maybe $100 million or maybe a billion. And you go along with this whole thing and you make jokes about it. Because I don't really find many billionaires or rich people that don't know this is all true. Because a lot of times they say, yeah, that's the way the world's always been. So what? Get with the program. Yeah, the world hadn't always been like this, because we're getting down to the end game right now. Hadn't always been like this. Where everybody on that stage that we just showed for TV viewers, look them up house by house, is tax exempt, their wealth is a state secret, and they're guarded by the government. And they are establishing a planetary world government because they think you are stealing resources by existing and they say you're a dumb animal, and they say you are going to be first dumbed down, your psyche ripped from you, so that they metaphysically are authorized to kill you because you're an animal. But first, you must be turned into an animal, metaphysically. The allegory of the prince was a frog. She kissed him and recognized he was a prince and became a man. Instead, you take the prince and you turn him into the frog. He doesn't even know he was a man. He's an animal. He's chattel. He's controlled. He's manipulated. You could snap your fingers and he'll operate under the stimuli you put him under. So what you're hearing here is the facts. The inbred royalty of the world established ruling classes to control Global systems, they are eugenicists, and they do not want you to receive the future that you could have. They see you as a giant, 
ugly scourge that they haven't been able to control with wars. Since the days of Plato, 2,300 years ago, king of the philosophers, he wrote that they should have wars to lower the population and they should basically breed the general public to be like dumb cattle to serve the intellectual elite. And Plato's thoughts have been adopted by every major empire. In fact, empires that hadn't even read Plato's thoughts. Empires that existed before Plato. In Persia and Japan and other places followed almost the exact same systems. And now they've decided you're obsolete. They're going to get rid of you. And I said I'd get into Black Lives Matter, but it's, it's just ridiculous. You take a bunch of people that are obsessed, white, black, it doesn't matter, with hype and culture and watch the Kardashians. And they're wondering why they got to go work at a hamburger place. And, you know, uh, they want free tuition because Bernie Sanders said so. And they just see these videos everywhere every day of cops killing people in the wrong in many cases. And it doesn't matter if statistically more people die. Than it. it doesn't matter if more people die statistically in a middle-sized town every day in car wrecks than get killed by the cops in a week. It doesn't matter because, again, it's a victory of the hallucination. It's the victory of the lie over the truth. Now, do some of the cops act bizarre? Do they act authoritarian? Do they act scared? Do they treat you with disrespect? Absolutely, in many cases. That's a real issue. And what this is all about is hyping people up to be politically aggressive, to prepare them to, quote, take political power, but in their own downfall. And in the crisis that comes out of that, establishing an even greater authoritarian tyranny. Just like they're going to use weaker bioweapons to get us into a medical tyranny, and then, of course, the more hardcore ones come in the future. It's all ratcheted up. The attacks just get bigger and bigger and bigger because we adapt to conform to the attack. That's what the nanny state's all about. Conform. Give up your individualism. Become weaker when there's an attack. And let stronger, specialized groups, warrior ants, protect you. But you're not really a queen down in the mound. You're being taught not to protect yourself because you're being prepared for the fire. You're being prepared to have your humanity sucked out of you before you're blown away like dust into the atmosphere. Now, I got a little angry earlier. I didn't actually get into 7277 and the UN and all the rest of it. I'm going to try to just focus briefly in five minutes. I'm back and give you a special report on it. Then we have a guest joining us for 30 minutes. And then I'm going to open the phones up for the rest of the broadcast for Bernie Sanders supporters to tell me why you're supporting Hillary Clinton. We'll be back. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. We can pull the quote up, but famously, Henry Kissinger in Evian, France, told the Bilderberg Group, meaning that if they could stir up enough civil unrest in the United States down the road, that Americans would welcome UN troops uh, on our streets. The euro is, is saying in response to a majority of the nations wanting to leave the euro, because they never voted to enter the euro, that, oh, we're just going to nationalize your military and not let you leave. Oh, and by the way, we're not going to let you have national teams anymore. That's racist to say you have the Spaniards, or you have the French, or uh, you, you can't have that anymore. This is being announced. You can have no identity. The TPP and the NAU and all these other secret agreements are going to rule your life. Well, I don't try to lionize JFK. I, I, I think he was manipulated at many levels, really believed he was trying to establish some type of planetary government for peace. He didn't want war with the Russians. But one of the reasons um, he got killed, or at least they used the right wing out of Texas to do it, Texas is the reason the president's dead. They kind of 
We had cold feet up in Chicago and cold feet in Miami and places. It's because Kennedy did not want to have a preemptive nuclear war with the Russians. And so there was already a Carnegie endowment for peace plan from the 30s to establish the UN, the whole system we see funded by the Rockefellers, but also the Carnegie Endowment, obviously. This is the Carnegie Endowment for Peace. Many of their minutes are now public from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. And you can see them charting out the whole future we live under. And they had a plan to merge us with the Soviet Union. Now, with the collapse of the Soviet Union and the reemergence of some Christian Orthodox roots, that's thrown that into question. We were then told that, oh, it was all a sleeper deal with the Russians. They were really going to reemerge and all this. There were certainly factions that wanted to do that, but the Russians have triple-crossed the globalists. That is my educated view on this, seeing their real actions and the globalist actions against them. But if you look at this system and this dialectic, it was codified in 1962, and Kit Daniels wrote an article about this last year. Did you know a law is on the books to disarm all Americans? Law provides impetus for ultimate world disarmament and UN control over military. And you can go to the United Nations Unity or Treaty, and it says civilian ownership of firearms threatens a legitimate power monopoly of the state or, or dictatorship. And then he links to the public law 87-29. This is on the books. And the original memorandum, you might want to read it. You can still send off the State Department and get a copy of these. Last time I checked for like a dollar. The United States Program for General and Complete Disarmament in a Peaceful World through the UN. And it shows the Russian weapons being, you know, being downgraded down to zero in the graphs and ours being downgraded to zero and then our police are disarmed but first the citizens so the military's phased down the citizens are disarmed and then the police are disarmed and then you turn on the news today cnn fox news uh you name it i've got the clips right here and they've got all these leftist groups saying disarm the police the police should not be able to have firearms we're going to play these clips coming up the next hour and take your phone calls. So I was sitting there watching all this and, and seeing the new community organizer they're, they're setting up, there won't be jobs in the future, is a quasi-government employee, like the head of Black Lives Matter, who has this $160,000 a year job as a board member on a school board. That looks like he's 20 years old. He lives in a house paid for by George Soros. Let's go out to break with Obama. Uh, talking about the domestic security force just as big as our military. That's what they're setting up. Specialist groups that'll just run around and engaging in racism and infighting. Here it is. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well. We'll be back. Stay with us. Hour number two straight ahead. Thank you. I don't want folks to have the hold, so I'm going to get the number out at about 20 after or so. So you can call in after James O'Keefe of the Veritas Project uh, joins us with some breaking news, but also his take on election 2016. What do you think uh, of this supposed pick? Uh, they say that Pence is scheduled with a bunch of Fox TV and, and other channels tomorrow. In the hours after Trump set to make the announcement, he stayed at his home uh, for a few days. I mean, I thought that was a big sign. But they had the other people, Genrich and Sessions and uh, General Flynn, to the same meeting in Indiana. So I think this is probably accurate information. It's uh, from the Hill. Drudge seems to have a good instinct for these things. Uh, talking to Stone, he said n nothing had been decided, uh, but that uh, he pretty much thought who he knew Trump was going to pick now. And uh, he, he didn't tell us what he talked to Trump about, but then he kind of brought it. I said, well, I think it's going to be Sessions, even though it'll be politically incorrect and make a big deal out of it. But they're going to do that anyways. And he goes, well, you really read my mind. Yeah, that's what I told him. But uh, Sessions wants to bow out. So that was the inside info there. And... Um, the word was it was probably going to be Pence, but that we didn't want to go there. We, we, 
I was kind of hoping to promote my own little way, Flynn, uh, because the media put out that whole thing about him being a Democrat to throw everybody off. Turns out that's not true. But regardless, he has a good background of integrity and, 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 and really exposing corruption and bucking corruption and giving the information, working with General Dempsey to the Russians four years ago when he was the head of defense intelligence. He was the head of defense intelligence just a year and a half ago. He got fired by Obama for that, folks. I mean, they weren't about to arrest him for espionage um, because the whole military went in and confronted Obama and said, you're backing Al-Qaeda and ISIS doing this. Is it okay if we share intelligence with people to stop them? And Obama's like, well, if you drop flyers two hours before, and it's only certain areas, and the Russians kept publishing the satellite photos of the hundreds of trucks an hour lined up going into Turkey, and, and, and said, we're going to blow that up. And they started blowing it up, and Turkey flipped out and started, you know, shooting down Russian aircraft. I mean, this is a circus, folks. Uh, but Trump's got good instincts. Trump's the guy in the arena. Trump is the guy that to turn down Adelson's $200 million to take um, Genrich. If he does a curveball and picks Genrich, um, that's one strike for Trump. But I'm waiting to see what he does once he gets in. But he just keeps amazing. me. I mean, he's just done things right down the line that are unprecedented, super courageous, super dangerous. Uh, he wants to basically downgrade NATO that's running around starting wars and backing the Arab Spring and really trying to start a new Cold War. That'll, they're trying to bankrupt Russia. And, uh, you know, Trump talks about it. He has a lot of generals advising him that they have a bunch of pork barrel, a bunch of weapons that don't work. We're giving the Chinese everything we got. He says, don't worry, we're going to have real weapon systems. We're going to be the strongest, but we're not going to start wars with Russia. And we're not going to let China get the secrets. Because it's the Chinese that have infiltrated. It's the Chinese that are in our defense intelligence system. They're the ones robbing everything. They're the ones with mobile execution vans. They're the communists. They're in bed with Walmart and the billionaires and the oligarchs screwing everyone. They're the enemy. Not the Chinese people. But the Communist Party of China is the most. Every science fiction movie you go see, the Chinese run the space program and run the world, basically. Uh, the new Independence Day, uh, the uh, Martian movie. I mean, man, you go see movies now. I mean, there's Chinese government red flag propaganda everywhere running the planetary government. I've seen... Basically, any movie I see that's military or space, the Chinese are running it. I mean, it, it, this country's in trouble, folks. I have a stack of news articles here in front of me where students mildly criticizing people on their own Facebook are being threatened or being kicked out of major colleges. There's two more today. There was one just yesterday. And Paul Watson's written a new article for Infowars.com. Black Lives Matter organizer triggered by white people demands money for being a fat black bitch. That's a quote. Be ready to write checks and give up your car keys. And what it is is just lazy, crazy social justice warriors. I don't care if you're black, white, or whatever. That are in their own fantasy land. And see every major media outlet, movies, TV shows, the White House, blaming the police. Well, white people better listen up, Hillary said. Obama said we need to reform things. Implying it's the police fault someone randomly went and shot him. It's not right if a crazy cop shoots somebody innocent. And it's not right if a, another crazy person goes and shoots five cops. Then they say it's racist to say all lives matter. That's an inversion of reality. That's the opposite of racism is to say all lives matter. It's racist to say black lives matter only. But the issue here is this is weaponization of media. This is the next phase of what the globalists are going to do in this country. With the UN advising and setting up meetings to watch the police in every U.S. city. Meanwhile, Trump is reportedly, uh, according to Sources at Fox and sources at the Hill. It's going to be Pence, the governor of Indiana. We're going to be going over that at the bottom of the hour, taking your phone calls. We're going to be talking to, to Bernie Sanders supporters. 
I mean, why would you now not go for Trump? I mean, the whole establishment's against him. You claim you're anti-establishment. What a joke. The truth is, you like a big government, don't you? You just, you just want a piece of it. Now, joining us uh, to the bottom of the hour is James O'Keefe, ProjectVeritas.com, best-selling author, I think the consummate investigative journalist. I'm not going to go over all of his amazing uh, feats with his crew, bringing down Acorn, you name it. He is a leading expert on fighting social justice warriors. Uh, but they have gone into an overdrive level. They've got some calculus at the White House where they believe they're going to win. He also has a new video uh, with a congressman admitting, oh, no, you know, we're going to have guns. You know, I mean, we're not going to say that our homes are gun-free zones. No, 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 just the schools and places. Uh, so we're going to play a clip of that video. Uh, the full video is on Infowars.com, ProjectVeritas.com. In fact, we have a short clip of that that I want to go ahead uh, and play right now. Uh, hidden cam shows anti-gun congressmen and staffers refusing to promote uh, homes as gun-free zones. Here it is. All right, we're called the Citizens Get Assist. Let's get about yes. it. Yes. Right. Basically, we want to see a ban on, on all guns. Yeah. And, and specifically, you know, we want to put this in people's, in, in every single law, and you have people drawing guns and say, this home is probably gun-free. I never even thought of this angle. This is almost, I'm a big gun control advocate, but oh, yeah. this yeah. is like a new angle I hadn't thought of that makes yeah. me almost nervous. Like, you think somebody would break into your house? Yeah, if, I if do. you put it up, I do kind of wonder. You think it'd make you a victim? I wonder. Wow. So that's, uh, well, you know, We'll get into the whole story with him right now and then talk about the bigger picture. Uh, great to have you on with us. Hey, Alex. Great to be with you. Well, I tell you, you, you want to tackle this story first or just get into the state of the uh, activation of what I'd call like Mao Youth Brigades or something, this day of rage coming up tomorrow? This is crazy. Well, I, I, maybe let's start with this gun-free zone story because I think it plays into uh, uh, the hypocrisy of our elected officials and, and uh, they're not believing what they actually write in the legislation. So maybe let's start there. Yeah, tell us who the players are in this video. So this is this is an interesting one. We did this four years ago in New York, Westchester, New York. We caught people on tape. The idea is simple. Approach these individuals and say, I want to put a sign on your lawn saying your home is a gun-free zone because these guys are anti-gun. Of course, they would do that because they write legislation. So what you're seeing right now is this guy is working for John Conyers. He's a legislative aide, he writes legislation. His name is Eric Sperling. And he says in the video that, oh, you can see the wheels turning inside of his head. He says, I'm a big control advocate, I'm a big gun control advocate. This is a new angle I hadn't thought about before. It makes me nervous, it makes me, quote, a target for criminals. So these legislators, these congressional people are on video saying that it would draw attention to their homes if they, advertise them as gun-free zones. Now, this is obvious to me and you, it's obvious to our audience, but to see the Democratic legislators say this when confronted with the truth, I think is really groundbreaking. And uh, I'm sure people have other ideas, but this is a start. They're actually saying, you know what? I don't know if this is such a good idea to, to advertise gun-free zones. Well, obviously it's common sense. The places that have all the gun laws have the highest crime rates in the world. They know this. I mean, the rich elite that are liberal all have got bodyguards. It's so hypocritical. I love the fact that Trump keeps saying, hey, give up your security, Hillary. I mean, it's, 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 it's an oxymoron. What point do you think, just as someone that's been following this so long, and, and what point have we reached? Are the social justice warriors and, and Black Lives Matter, and of course, we have a longer clip with Wrangle coming out and talking. I, I mean, do, do they actually believe anything they're saying, or is this just pure divide and conquer? I do not believe they, I do not think they believe most of what they're saying. I wrote a column, uh, Drudge linked to it on Friday after the shootings last week. We are entering uncharted, uncharted territory. There is uh, a, a brave new world of, of unregulated video. I think it's a good thing. I think it was very tragic last week what happened and, and these shootings uh, with the police. Uh, it was the shootings in Minnesota as well. But the, the video is really catalyzing the masses. It's creating these social movements. and. I think, unfortunately, it's creating these, uh, these, these mobs, these violent mobs, but I think it also can be harnessed, and this is the point I made, it can be harnessed for good to promote government transparency. For example, we know that Bill Clinton met with Loretta Lynch. We know that uh, there, are federal, uh, there are bribes of federal judges taking place. Well, that should be live streamed. And we can harness this technology, this live streaming technology, for example, for good. And I, I'm a representative of, a, of an organization, Project Veritas, 
which is beta testing hidden camera video streaming to our servers. That way, if anything happens, we have a copy of the video. If the law enforcement takes it, we have a copy of it. And I think that this is a power that can be used to promote government transparency as much as it can be used to hold police officers. Well, I'm all for citizens having hidden cameras. I think making police wear body cams all the time, I wouldn't want to work and live like that. I think it's big brother. It sets the precedent for everybody to have to have that at work. And, and, and I don't like it. I mean, I think if a company wants to make you do it, that's your option to do it. Uh, and I think police, when they're on calls, should uh, and you know have a, 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 a camera on for them and everybody else. I used to be for that, but now I realize it'll be selectively enforced. Because in liberal areas, when cops do bad things, they just cover it up mostly. But then if it happens in a more uh, you know freer area, they will then come in and use it as a way to politically take over uh, and kind of cherry pick things. I mean, so I think there's a problem with uh, you know too many cameras. I agree with you. I agree with you on that. And I want to make a clear distinction that, you know, this is about little brother holding big brother accountable. Exactly. Which is the entire point of the American experiment. Giving big brother cameras and all that, we've already lost our expectations. Oh, cops are having to wear body cams in many cities now when they use the bathroom. That's right. I'm sure they are. And, you know, to, to the, I think the point Ed Snowden made on Vice recently is he said, uh, you know, Shane Smith asked him, well, why aren't more Americans outraged by all this, outraged by all this surveillance? And Ed Snowden said, well, they would be if we had the politicians on tape admitting it in plain words. So the whole point of this technology, that, and I really think it's a transformative moment in American politics, because the technology is unregulated, it's proliferating, anybody can live stream video now. Now, we use hidden camera devices that are not, you can't buy them in most stores. But the fact that we can hold Big Brother accountable and make them lose their expectations of privacy. That's what this movement is all about. Absolutely. They know that at least the people and the fifth estate, the new fifth estate, are watching. Also, it, it, it really allows us to show that the so-called left are the most ignorant, anti-liberal weirdos the world's ever seen. I mean, this is, I mean, just the video camera and YouTube and the proliferation of, of basically everybody getting on it now and having millions of providers of news, not just thousands or hundreds, uh, it's almost like a singularity. It's showing how monstrous the social justice warriors are to a person. I mean, these really are mentally ill, uh, weirdos, bizarro land. I, I mean, it's even forcing the left, who are more trendy but aren't stupid, to go ahead and admit, okay, something's wrong here. I mean, when you look at Triglypuff, Aid Skrelik, I mean, when you look at these people, Carl the Cuck, I mean, when you look at these people, they are scary. Ma'am, uh, a citizen journalist named Mike Strickland was detained. This was covered on your website yesterday for, for unholstering his gun. He felt threatened. And there were videotapes of the Black Panthers right before he unholstered his gun, threatening to take out their guns. So things are all caught on video. My greater point is that we can use this as a, as a movement for good. And, we, and, and I think that, and again, they I'll just shut down the street. Pull your guns out and shoot cops 10 That's minutes right. before. That's right. That happened right before Mike Strickland was arrested. Mike Strickland is sitting in jail. His, his bail is set at $250,000. Mike Strickland, you know, is a friend of mine. He's worked with me. And by the uh, way, that's a liberal, liberal town, you notice. Now they're throwing the book at him. I mean, it's crazy. So, so we think if the cops are all bad, oh, they're not bad when they're liberal cops and allow people to be abused. Right. And, and they originally charged him with a misdemeanor for menacing behavior, but then they charged him with two felonies. Now, Mike Strickland was assaulted at the last... Last year was assaulted. He broke his arm in three places. He was tackled to the ground. And right before this event, Black Panther said, take out your guns and use them, basically. So that's all on video. There, there's a picture of Mike Strickland. Um, he didn't want to hurt anybody. Uh, and he's got he's the gun pretty much aimed down at the ground. He's got his hand back saying, stay back. As people right. say, we're pulling guns up. Right, right, exactly. So this is a friend of mine, a citizen journalist, but... You know, I, my, I, what I draw from that whole thing is that everything is on video. Who, had, who was attacked the year before? Uh, Mike Strickland was assaulted by someone who disagreed with him. Dis someone disagreed with him and threw Mike Strickland, that guy you just saw, threw him to the ground. He broke his arm in three places. He couldn't work for six months. So he's been physically, violently assaulted in the past. And then so he just simply says, back off, back. and they've arrested him. Stay there. Final segment straight ahead with our guests, then your phone calls. Enzo keeps our guests coming up in the next segment. We're opening the phones up to Bernie Sanders supporters. How on earth could you not support Trump when he's totally anti-establishment and Hillary stole the election, stole your votes? They just they just appointed her in California, just gave her the race there.
It's crazy. We're going to be taking your phone calls in the next segment on that and on Mike Pence. That, that's who they've – I called Roger Stone. He said, I cannot comment. It shouldn't have been leaked. I'm not saying that's who it is. I'm coming on the show tomorrow. This, was, th th this leak was not supposed to happen. So um, that's the quote. So whoever did it's going to get in some trouble with Trump. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not going to give you Rogers' quote, but uh, it's a big deal. Uh, but we'll we'll see if this is even accurate. So I, I don't know. I'm still in the dark here. I think it probably is, folks. Uh, going back to James O'Keefe, uh, James, looking at this this day of rage tomorrow, all the establishment behind this, Hollywood behind it. Uh, the, you're taking this issue statistically. Two hundred and fifty eight black people were killed by cops. Let's just say none of it was justified. Obviously, most of it was uh, in last year. That's not even a blip, but you'd think it was the end of the world. What do you think the Obama end game is on all this? Well, I will say that the convention is coming on Monday and there's going to be some violent protests. And here's what I can comment on, because I can only comment on the investigations I do. We have people who are actually meeting with some high, high level left wing uh, in operatives and exposing and planning the activities for the um, convention next week. And our goal is to try to preempt the violence and preempt the, the, the uh, social justice warriors and their violence and their mob mentality by exposing it. Who's, who's funding it and what activities are they doing that's fraudulent? For example, we got one of these guys on tape saying they're going to bust people from state to state and commit voter fraud for the presidential election. It's all about the fraud. Uh, as evidenced by our gun-free zone video, these legislators don't want to put signs in their homes saying their guns are uh, or their homes are gun-free zones. These people are hypocrites. They don't believe in what they even say publicly. We just got to expose it. That's the name of the game. Get it on video. Release the video and outrage. Well, James, you just dropped a bombshell, and I'm, and I'm talking to some of the folks today. We've had multiple people contact us that are in the media and who are more libertarian but seen as liberal, and they're saying, listen, we're at newspapers. We're at major firms. We're at major you know, uh, meetings with people planning to go to Cleveland uh, with 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 uh, Infowars, uh, make America white again. Uh, they're also planning dirty tricks, but they're they're trying to figure out how to do it and not and get coordinate with Black Lives Matter that it's a false flag. So they're scared of getting beat up. But it's stuff like that. Is that the type of intel you've got? Well, no, we, we actually have people who have been working since January uh, building relationships with some of these high profile, I call them operatives, people behind the scenes. Oh, wow. So you've actually penetrated into the people that are being run by the White House and Soros. I mean, the actual minions. Uh, yeah. We're, we're, we, we, when one of our people got burned uh, in the process, but we still have a few of them, half a dozen of them, that, that have relationships with some of these operatives. And they're on video describing what they're going to do. And we have meetings this week with these well, operatives. Let me just ask you, why not let them come out and do it? I, mean, I know that's kind of aiding the crime. I guess we can't do right. that. But then let them come out and do it, and then th let them blame it on us, and then show it was really them. Isn't that more powerful? But that's a moral dilemma. I, I think that's a very good idea, Alex. I think you. I mean, as long as it's not if they if they say we're going to bomb the place, I'd have to. I'd have to obviously. I'd have oh, to immediately. Yeah. Tell tell whoever it is. But if they say we're going to do this activity and make it look authentic, which is what they've been saying, and we have this on video, I'm holding on to this, and I'm. And they're still planning for the convention next week. My, uh, there are meetings taking place, to, you know, over the weekend about what they're going to do. So that's what I'm doing. And I'll be sure to report back to you and your audience about what I find. Well, thank you. I got to say about five, six years ago, there was stuff at, at Breitbart being written about Democrats and mall off cocktails and stuff. And I kind of, you know, thought it was exaggerated or the FBI might have set them up. But now in retrospect, looking at it and researching it more. No, this is the left is really this violent and really being directed by the establishment. I think it's a major miscalculation. It is a major miscalculation, but let's let's and that's their Achilles heel. That's that's their Achilles. I mean, is, is it a miscalculation for the attorney general to meet on an airplane with the former president who's the husband of the nominee? It's a huge miscalculation, but it doesn't mean anything unless we get on. Sure. Video. Is it arrogance or, or uh, is it ignorance? I mean, what is it on average? I, I mean, that's a study in human nature, but I, I think it's, they think they can get away with it. It really comes down to the fact they think that, that they will get away with it because people are too afraid to do anything about it. And that's where people like you and I have to tape it. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, you're smarter than I am at a lot of this, James O'Keefe, uh, Project Veritas.com. Folks can get his book there, Blueprints, how to do all this safely in the best way. But I, I mean, m maybe blow their cover right before they do it.
and then on some of the stuff blow it after that'll be even bigger but i can't wait to see it i'm going to be there i know you're going to be there as well thank you so much project veritas i'm alex jones infowars.com stay with us big news straight ahead Day of rage all across the country tomorrow. Social justice warriors, socialists, communists running around with their red flags, spewing anti-white racism, most of them white. It's all part of the dialectic of control. Total and complete manipulation. Hypocrisy on steroids. Matt Damon, of course, has called for immediate gun ban. That's, that's the headline in the Daily Mail. He actually called for just banning guns. See, they're, they're more honest now. Repeal the Second Amendment. New York Times. New York Times, kill Donald Trump. Okay, you yeah, know, he's allowed to say that. They're allowed to say that. Um, all these other publications coming out. Rolling Stone, repeal the Second Amendment. And then Matt Damon, who isn't a bad actor, I don't even dislike the guy. I don't want to dislike him, but he's such a fraud with bodyguards and armed bodyguards. I'll tell you why I like Keanu Reeves, man. He is pro-gun, amazing at the range, uh, knows, knows his stuff, super smart, doesn't talk to the media. Nobody knows what he thinks. The media says he's dumb because he won't talk to him. Well, I ought to try to get a hold of Keanu Reeves sometime because... Um, he was in the movie A Scanner Darkly, and I consulted on it, and I was in it, and I got to know him pretty good. And then he opened up uh, some, and he was just super smart. Well, I tell you, he, 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 he got some incredible motorcycles, too. But let's just say, he's kind of like a modern Steve McQueen, but nobody knows it. Motorcycles, guns, whole nine yards, but I mean, pretty wild stuff. Like Steve McQueen riding, you know, winning races and off-road stuff back before they had dirt bikes. Remember all that? Uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, notice you don't hear him shooting his mouth off against the Second Amendment, do you? He's made so much of his money in movies with guns. He's not a hypocrite. But Matt Damon. Matt Damon is a whole nother bird. In fact, I'm, I'm going to stop with the uh, Keanu Reeves stuff. Um I've not pursued Hollywood. I've not pursued people in Hollywood. But uh, I kind of look back and wish I would have a little more with Keanu Reeves because he's a really interesting guy. I, I know over the years he got more of my films and stuff, and his assistant would reach out and invited me out there if I went out to L.A., and I just never went and did it. I mean, i got to tell you, I really like Kurt Russell. I mean, to learn that he says, I'm not liberal, I'm not conservative, I'm 1776, pro-gun, pro-Americana, we need to bring Americana back. It's the greatest system in the world, and that's why it's under attack today by the controlled left and the controlled right. Wow, I love Kurt Russell. Isn't it great he's a patriot? See, I don't want to talk bad about Matt Damon. I want to talk about people I like, or, or Clint Eastwood. Just incredible for what he's done and, and what he stood for and the amount of films he's produced and just everything. It's just and how old he is and still, still just an example of a real man. Of course he's a Michael Savage listener. Been on the show. See, that's what I'm talking about. Thank God we're not like these people. Matt Damon. The guy is a nightmare on every issue. He's so horrible. He spews whatever the establishment wants, and they just keep giving him the big roles. Because let me tell you, there's very few people in Hollywood that have got the clout, like a Clint Eastwood, to be able to say and do what they want and not be attacked. Kurt Russell had a lot of courage when he came out. They blackball you. They come after you. I had, I don't mean to go off on this jag, but I'll go ahead and do it. A pretty big Hollywood producer who's put out some of the biggest movies and been married to uh, one of the most beautiful stars and produced a whole bunch of, you know, big TV shows, HBO, you name it. I mean, top shows, shows I actually watch or have watched. And he was pre pretty much just inviting me out to L.A. He said, listen, yeah, the uh, secret society, the Abe Lincoln Society has been kind of broken up. And. Uh, but he said, you know, it's still there. And there's a lot of good folks out in Hollywood who want to meet with you. You know, if you ever want to come out there or come down to Houston. 
And I said, yeah, I'm just so busy manning these guns here, but I'd love to go out and, you know, talk about some projects or something. And I said, so it's, it's, it's really that bad. And he was like, oh, yeah. I mean, they're surveilling us, and they know when we meet. 60 years ago, communists had to meet in secret talking about overthrowing the country. Now, conservatives, beyond Tom Selleck, some of the biggest names, folks, go in secret meetings, 30, 40 people. And then Hollywood has infiltrators that go in and report it to the big bosses. And then you don't get your project done. And then this guy's a big producer. I was flattered he came here to see me. Really nice guy. Big fan. I mean, it's like so much of the stuff. I don't watch a lot of TV or movies. It was like, go down the list. It was like, wow. You know, to actually meet the people behind it. it, it it's just to know I'm in a country where... There's secret societies for conservatives. And all conservative means is you don't want to turn your guns in. You don't hate America. You believe in free market. I mean, you'd call these people 50 years ago liberals. I mean, what they call conservatives today are, you know, guys that don't hate America and, you know, who are married to a Buddhist. I, I mean, you know. And then they're not even against gay marriage. It's like, it's uh, that has to meet in secret in Hollywood. The pedophiles don't, though. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, it isn't liberal, folks. It's a bunch of damn pedophiles. And they want control of this culture, and they've got an agenda, and they like screwing stuff up. And that's why nothing makes sense, and why everything's upside down, and why there's all these entitled people running around with you know, complaining about everything and, and, and saying, I'm a victim. Wah, wah. They're like babies. They're like toddlers. Paul Watson did that analysis. Six times more likely to steal, many more times likely to not give to charity. That's the modern liberal. They're not liberal. They want to tell real, open-hearted, good people that we're bad because they know it works on us and we'll try to cozy up and make them feel better like we're their mommy. I'm not your mommy. I'm done. I remember driving out of here that afternoon. I was just like leaving work and I'm just like. I just, it's bizarre to have a big, big producer here. And I've had so many of those bizarro meetings over the years. I don't even have those anymore. The guy came here. And it's just surreal that our country is in that much trouble. And then Hillary Clinton can have her goons at public unity rallies with Bernie supporters, that's what it's billed as, pull down Bernie signs and attack free speech and attack Bernie supporters after you stole their votes. Was well, this guy a jihadi or something? Yeah, don't let that woman have speech. Give that man a medal. That's some probably jihadi in a suit, you know, keeping the little poor socialist from, and then, and then the women gang up on him. What are you doing going after a woman? Yeah, where's the men around there to smack that guy right in the nose? Just bam. Hey, how's that feel, punk? Put your nose back together now. You just grabbed a woman. Oh, no, Corey Lewandowski, he didn't do that. That guy just grabs her and rips it out of her hands. And... But it's okay because it's Hillary. It's for the women. When she's not overthrowing moderate Muslim countries and bringing in the hordes of hell. The hordes of hell. Finance her. She's got the whole Muslim caliphate wired up. That woman's a puppet. They got their arm right up there running that show. But it's okay because Matt Damon, Matt Damon, he calls for immediate, I always love how they have the, the, you know, the desperate sounding, oh, we care so much. I, I call for, I call for immediate. And then George Clooney with all his bodyguards and palaces as they're taking one refugee in is up there in Europe giving a speech and he's fopping around. Oh, this is, oh, this is Trump's evil. Oh, what's my lines? Oh, a bad man. No, 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 no. What is the line? No, no it's going to happen. Oh, you're so intellectual. I want to hear from Bernie supporters. I want to hear, you can call in and say whatever you want. I'm not going to censor your calls. And if you want to make it about me 
and about how capitalism is evil and everything. That's fine, but I'd actually want to reach out to you, not in a butt-kissing way, because you've already been robbed, you've been screwed over, I told you that was going to happen, the fix is in, and if you're planning to vote for Hillary, I think you are one of the biggest morons on the planet. How could you vote for her when she, the big banks are behind her, the corrupt elements of Wall Street, foreign governments, the communist Chinese, 12 different Gulf states, I mean, can you imagine if Donald Trump was financed by Gulf states, 20% of his campaign, that literally chop homosexuals' heads off? How fast that little uh, Bernie fad blow over dodos. Got conned by the old con man, never worked a day in his life. Fix was in on you the whole time. And now he says Hillary represents everything it's wonderful and good. Matt Damon called for, in fact, can we get the video? There's video of this. Matt Damon called for a ban on guns in, quote, one fell swoop. You ever thought about what will happen? I think he probably has. They've gone from saying, we don't want your guns, just let us register them, to, yeah, we're going to take all your guns. We got camps ready. We're ready for a war with you. Matt Damon called for a ban on guns in one fell swoop while promoting his newborn film in Australia. No irony, just running around machine gunning and killing the whole time. The 45-year-old actor also said he admired the way Australia passed tighter gun laws. Just 12 days after the 96 Port Arthur massacre, that was staged. Total hypocrite. Oh, but don't worry, Lena Dunham, whoever she is, just look at the self-importance on her face for your TV viewer. Calls for altering of gun-toting Jason Bourne subway ads. How about we stick stickers on there saying, hypocrite, I'm protected by bodyguards, Infowars.com. How about some of our listeners go do that? Get aggressive with these people. Oh, no, they're putting flowers in his hands instead of a gun. Because the image of a human defending themselves is evil. No, these are tyrants conquering us, and they want to make that idea in your psyche anathema. They want you domesticated. It'd be like breeding legless, eyeless, toothless gerbils to feed to a boa constrictor. Now, a boa wants a little bit of struggle. So does a cat for it eats something. But, you know, not these globalists. They want you, well, they want you to have eyes, though, so you can be horrified when they metaphysically suck you dry. So I guess no arms, no legs, no teeth. And you're just like, ooh, ooh, and then, and then here comes, here comes one of these, you know, domestication vampires, or, or she's more of a Renfield handler, and she's like, just, just turn those in. We're gonna take real good care of you, cupcake. Matt Damon talks gun control ahead of born release. <laughs> Matt Damon. Meanwhile, it's all part of a world government UN plan created by our own government and the robber barons to disarm our nation finally and have us under a one world government ending with the citizens and the police being disarmed. Only special UN tactical units in every area. This is the official plan we'll allow to be have guns. And now it's all over the news on Infowars.com, Black Lives Matter, saying... There's a new Black Lives Matter support group of white people that says disarm the police now. You know, I didn't want to militarize the police. I knew they were cooking up the Civil War America scenario. I tried to stop all that. But now that they brought the drug cartels in, now that they've engaged in all this, it's like the uh, one of the leaders of well, in, in West Texas was it. Uh, it was the county judge, the head of the county city council. Yeah, he came out a few years ago and said, we need armored vehicles to fight Obama when he comes and confiscates the guns. Was that Lubbock? So we've got all that unfolding. But I want to take your phone calls right through to the end of the next hour, starting in the next segment. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. If you're a Bernie supporter, and I'm screening your calls here on air, which means I'm going to get a little angry if it's if it's a joke or a side issue. I mean, I really want to hear from Bernie supporters. There's two different topics. 
okay? I usually have the open, most free-for-all show you can imagine, but I sometimes want to actually hear from you on a certain topic. And what do you think of the leak that it's supposedly Mike Pence, um, and it looks like it's leaking out of Fox News because they already have interviews with him scheduled tomorrow to roll call and to a bunch of other places there at the Hill. So what do you think about that if it's true? I'm, I'm glad it's not New Genrich. 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. But hey, do I get another apology from the thousands of publications that said I was insane and I believe there's a plan to get our guns when it's all on paper? And I have all these senators saying it on video and, and, and Handgun Control Incorporated saying it doesn't matter what Mr. Jones does with his rallies. We have your children in the public schools and we are indoctrinating them and we will get your guns. That's what the head of the Violence Policy Center, a.k.a. Handgun Control Incorporated, said in the front page of the Metro and State in 2000 when I caught bribery down at the Capitol and blew a bunch of their bills sky high. I caught it on video by the grace of God. And that's why we're going to bring them down because they're a bunch of arrogant scum and they and, and we're going to keep catching them. But he said, we got, he actually said, we got your kids. <laughs> we got your kids. We got your kids. And the reason they got our kids is we let, we put them in these systems and these day camps and these systems. We pay for these worthless college degrees to turn out a bunch of brain damaged idiots. Now let's go out to break with Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Here he is. And, and gun control, for example, how much do you think that's a debate that's, that's coming up? It's really just... You know, it's, uh, you guys did it here in one fell swoop, and um, I, I, I wish that could happen in, in my country, but it's not, it's such a personal issue for people that we don't, we cannot talk about it sensibly. Mm. We just can't. Sensible. It just, it gets, people get so emotional, and so that... Uh, that's that enough, even that's enough. Shut make, him up, I'm going to play him later. Um... One fell swoop, New York Times, Rolling Stone, time to repeal it, LA Times, time to repeal, the White House, all admitting that's their plan, but we're crazy. We're just not being reasonable. Because we just want a big shadow government to have all the weapons. That's a great idea. Uh, don't forget, I've barely been plugging this, but man, this is the last day to get upwards of 40, well, up to 40% off on all the storable foods at InfoWarsStore.com. Super high quality. You need to get prepared. You need to be independent. And 10% off on all the nutraceuticals across the board. And 25% off DNA Force, the incredible, I mean, the ultimate nutraceutical. It really is the most powerful formula for detoxifying the cells, uh, nerve growth regeneration. This, 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 this is it. This is it. Rasmussen has him seven points ahead. He's way ahead now in more and more battleground states. And his lead on Hillary is only growing. Especially after the FBI let her go scot-free. That really even woke up a lot of liberals. And look, when I was growing up, or even in college, I was, quote, conservative on guns and things, but I'm attracted to what you call classical liberal society, art, literature, openness, cultural freedom. I know there are real liberals out there, but they have been inducted into a cult that tells them what type of language to use, to be guilty, to like live in a cult. It's classic cult programming. And it's intensifying. And, and I just want to ask Bernie Sanders supporters, how could you not vote for Trump? He's way more populist. The whole power structure hates him. You know all that racist stuff is just used as a political weapon. But do you really just want to feel like you're behind a winner? Can you admit you've been lied to? I mean, if Trump did one-tenth of what Hillary was doing, I, I wouldn't support him. I mean, Hillary stole at least 10 states. He should be the nominee. Just for the integrity of our elections. But you know, you want to be domesticated. You want to be taken care of. And the biggest chumps out there are always collectivists. So I guess you're just acting like you historically are supposed to. We're going to go to Michael and then James and Dustin and Robert and others. The toll-free number is 800 259 I'm going to go bam, bam, bam next hour. I want to call her in just a moment. Please don't forget 
And, and by the way, this is a scare tactic. I personally am getting more storable food, medical supplies. I'm getting my firearms in order. I'm getting, um, you name it, I, I'm getting prepared because we've gone from a possibility of collapse to a probability to a near certainty. It's already happening all over the world. The, the, you know, the Chinese president orders People's Liberation Army to prepare for combat war with the U.S. Putin's warning the West. Our government's bringing in massive numbers of uh, jihadis into the nation. They're, they're trying to kick off a civil war. They're trying to kick off civil unrest. The elites are stockpiling food and, and, and going to armored redoubts. You need to get storable food. Patriots need to be prepared. You need to plant a garden. You need to know how to use a firearm. And, and you need high-quality food that's fresh, last 25 years, and is the best deal out there. That's why it's our sponsor, My Patriot Supply. And I just said, hey, I just want to private label your entire food line. I'll sell your food right next to it at an InfoWars store at the lowest price. The only way I could go lower was to private label it. That's how you usually get 10% even below their lowest prices, and then they're the best. Well, now you get 40% off on a wide spectrum of their food and at least 20%. You cannot beat these deals. They end today. I've extended it. It's supposed to be a three-day sale. It's been almost two weeks. A lot of the stuff that was on sale, we can't do it anymore because it either sold out or, 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 or I, don't, I can't violate contracts with suppliers. So Infowarsstore.com, and it's helping fund the operation. Of people are responding because you can see the writing on the wall. I mean, let's just hope we don't need to use this. Let's just hope you can give it to charity or you know use it when you're camping or whatever down the road. But whether it's a month supply or six months or a year, it, it, they got specialty diets. It is upwards of, well, it, some of it is 40%, but 20 to 40% off depending on what you order. InfoWarsLife.com uh, is where you can get DNA Force 25% off. We hardly ever do that. Uh, it is such an amazing nutraceutical research, DNA Force. Uh, but 10% off on all the nutraceuticals, and then that ends tonight. The DNA Force we're going to extend uh, through part of next week, uh, unless we sell out, which it looks like. We might actually do it by Tuesday at current sales rates. Uh, it's just so expensive to produce. I just never make enough of it, and it's hard to source. So I, I never get over that hump where I've got enough to be sure I can make enough, because then I can't. You know, people that run businesses know how it is, and that's how we fund this info war is a business model. Uh, but uh, our business is defeating the globalist. We're having some success, but we're going to come back in um, 70 seconds. Go directly to your phone call. Stay with us. Third hour. This is GCN, the Genesis Communications we'll Radio Pitch, too. Network. All right, we're going to go to Michael in Florida, a Bernie supporter. James in Texas is a Bernie Sanders supporter. Dustin, let's talk about the VIP leak, which is a big deal. And this is a leak. This is a leak. Uh, Trump had a whole plan to roll this out tomorrow. And this is, this is RNC suicide crap. The word is, this is out of Fox News. That's not from Roger, but I concurred with him on it. Or we talked to him, let's we'll stop there. To the Hill. And this is so they can steal the thunder and not let Trump roll it out. But we'll see. Uh, but I'm digressing. We're going to also go to Robert in California and uh, Jonathan and others. But right now, let's go to Michael in Florida, Bernie supporter. So are you going to support Trump or are you going to support Hillary? Um, I'm going to support Hillary. Okay, can you tell us why? Oh, uh, yeah, because Donald Trump wants to torture um, terrorists, right? Well, here in Clay County, Florida, what the cops did, they maced somebody, Daniel Linson Bigler, and they put a bag over his head and strapped him in a chair until he died, and nobody was held accountable, and uh, that's a violation of our Eighth Amendment rights. There's no cruel or unusual punishment, and we might as well not even have a jury if they can just take innocent Americans, say they're defiant, mace them, put a bag over their head, strap them in a chair until they die. Well, I, let, let me talk now. Let, let, let me talk. You said that twice now. Uh, I think this is a very cogent argument against Donald Trump you brought up and is one of the only ones that is, uh, I, I think, of serious concern. Now, you've welded it in to local police, and I actually know about that case, some of these restraint chairs, a bag over the head, people suffocating. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that looks like very sadistic, crazy behavior. And sometimes really bad sadists get off, and it's wrong. The, the issue is, statistically, though, it's very rare. I'm not defending it. And the globalists 
that are literally the equivalent of, you know, just 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 the black plague, uh, you know, the end of the world type stuff. Um, I don't use the space alien analogy because people think I'm too serious about that, but they're out to get us. OK, that's the big mass number. That's what's going on. And, and they divert us with all this. And so Hillary and Bernie pay lip service to this Black Lives Matter thing that that is a concern about police brutality that a lot of white folks, everybody else have concerns about. And then it's projected onto that because Trump wants to act tough, knows they're already waterboarding people. It's kind of refreshing. He's honest about it uh, and says, you know, let's waterboard ISIS. I get the mission creep and now we waterboard everybody. I'm against torture. And I think we lose the moral high ground. I think Trump is wrong on that point. And if I ever interview him again, I think I'll raise that point. Um, or if I talk to him next week. The point is, is that, he, and he's backed off of it some. Don't you see how the whole power structure is against him, though? So, I mean, it, I mean, I mean, doesn't that outweigh? I mean, you know, Hillary, talk about torture. She puts, let's humanize the hundreds of thousands of Christians murdered by bloodthirsty ISIS. Uh, you know, I, I understand some cops killed somebody. Now, let's put the hundreds of thousands of dead Christians she uh, basically backed. Does that touch your heartstrings at all, or just isn't even on the radar screen? Well, um, it's it's not about a bad cop. It's about a policy that gives them the authority to take innocent American citizens, say they, they were defiant, which is arbitrary, mace them, put a bag over their head, and strap them in a chair until they die. And the Eighth Amendment clearly says... Okay, no okay, you're not listening to me. You didn't, see, you didn't, you didn't respond. I intellectually responded to what you said and actually listen to what you said, and then you just, boom, went right back to talk point. And, and I understand it, at that level, you are correct. We're talking about a very complex world, big issues here. Donald Trump isn't going to try to legalize torture of American citizens here in the U.S. And by the way, it's already going on, just so you know. Well, this is going to be interesting, make no mistake. Trump is supposedly going to announce Mike Pence, the governor of Indiana, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern. we got Roger Stone coming on to talk about it tomorrow. I talked to Stone. Nico did. He relayed the message. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to relay all of it here. It's part of it was private. But just that this is definitely a leak. This is not Trump. And somebody's going to get in trouble for this and that he's not going to talk about it until tomorrow. So that's what's going on on that front. Um, probably Fox News, where interviews were being set up and things is, 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 is probably where this got leaked to roll call. I got that from another source, but that's obviously not the issue. Do you like Mike Pence? Obviously a lot better than Newt Gingrich, but That's just a no-brainer. It better not be Newt Gingrich. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231 on this live Thursday worldwide broadcast. We're going to go to James, Dustin, Robert, uh, Jonah, and others here in just a moment. If you just tuned in, we had a caller just a few minutes ago who was saying, look, I don't like Trump because he says he wants to waterboard ISIS. And I said, I don't, I'm not for torture either. But you know, Hillary is droning everybody. She overthrew all these countries. She put ISIS in to kill hundreds of thousands of people. I mean, leftist regimes going to this level are going after free speech. Um, in my experience, leftist police departments are some of the most corrupt out there. And as you cherry pick a few bad examples of the police, we have the statistics. And then your whole world view is, I'm going for Hillary because she's against the police, is what he said. He kept bringing up corrupt police in some area of Florida. And people that die in these restraint chairs. Yes, it's horrible. And I've seen the videos. And we need to change the laws to not allow that to go on. Because they don't call it torture. See, it's all definitions. But let me explain something. Under Obama, torture has been massively expanded they don't call it that. And they teach torture to the Navy SEALs and to the Army forces and the rest of them, to special forces. Now, they, they teach you its evasion of torture or how to deal with it. 
Later, you're told. No, this is how you torture somebody. So it's time for all the big kids to grow up and understand why Trump is just telling you like it is. Oh, they'll torture if I tell them to, and we're going to torture them. It's actually sickeningly refreshing because I don't support the torture. I understand overall it rots your country. But the fact that Trump would come out and say it is not to sell it. He's being totally real with you. He thinks he could use the ring of Mordor selectively when he gave the authorization to sign torture warrants. He's ready to sign those warrants to torture leaders of ISIS and Al-Qaeda to stop them and not rain down supplies to them. He's being real with you. And even though I disagree with it, it's very refreshing, very refreshing to have somebody straight talk you. And you can't handle that. You can't handle that Hillary is the most bloodthirsty warmonger you can imagine, that the neocons and warmongers hate Trump because he plans to have peace through strength, a real military, not fighters that cost a billion dollars and aren't as good as F-15s. He said, actually, what he's planning. People won't go read what he said. It makes a lot of sense. We have half the global GDP of the military. Half of the military spending is done by the U.S. or more. And let me tell you, they're building a bunch of crap. It's weapons we built 30, 40 years ago that are winning wars today. And the Russians aren't building junk. They're building real weapons. And they're not giving them to the communist Chinese. We're giving what we got to the Chinese, which is insane. Mark my words, China is who we're going to be facing in the future. But the globalists want to take Russia out because they aren't voluntarily lowering their population and committing suicide. Say what you want about Russia. They've turned the oxygen back on over there. They're like, oh, 80 years of communism? I think we're going to try something a little different now. And everybody's like, oh, you're really still a communist. You're still, oh, yeah. That's why Putin's arrested more than 10 oligarchs. And every time they're Rothschild or Rockefeller fronts. And the Rothschilds sued newspapers in England that said that and lost the lawsuit. And the judge said, I am blown away. Go read his ruling. He said, I cannot believe this. You sued these people, and this case proved what they said and more. You are the shadow government in Russia. And Putin's saying, hey, guess what? We're kicking your ass out of here. How you like that? I want the big mega banks and the globalists off my back. I want free market. I want a level playing field. I want a shot at trying to have a good future. I don't want to be racially played off against everyone. Trump says he wants to unify people. But when you've got globalists and outsiders trying to tear the country apart, he's got to identify it. That's not division. Trump is acting like a man. And that's what they don't like because they say the age of men is over. It's the age of the machines and the technocrat and the globalists and all this delusional garbage. Well, the best laid plans of mice and men often go astray. I'm going to stop. I apologize. I said I take a lot of calls, but I wanted to respond to that guy. But I want to give you time on air. I, I got to get better at this. I'm doing it. I'm skipping this break. And I'm going to take one call and just move to the next. I'm not even going to defend my positions. I just want to hear from you. Who's been holding the longest here? Let's talk to Dustin in Florida. You're on the air on the VP leak. Go ahead. Uh, it's nice to talk to you, Alex. Um, I just wanted to say that, you know, I look up to you as like a, you know, intelligence officer in a lot of ways, socially and, you know, militarily. Um, well, the VP leak, obviously, you know, Mike Pence, um, the little bit of, uh, stuff I had to figure out was that, um, he went to Hanover College, uh, School of Law. So, you know, ultimately he's a lawyer. I would like to see a military pick, you know, uh, I was U.S. Army, uh, Communications and intelligence and... Yeah, I would, I would like to see Flynn. I mean, Flynn's got real integrity. You can just see it looking at him. He's a good man. Now, I went and looked at his history. I didn't just go off how he looks, but you, I've watched a lot of his speeches. I've watched him. I've read some of his writings. He, he's very genuine. Yes, yes. Um, you know, I agree with someone. You know, this guy, Mike Pence, is just a lawyer, you know. So is Hillary Clinton, you know. And, you know, I, why I don't vote for Trump is because... Why I wouldn't is because I know a system is rigged. I know it's absolutely. We know. have got so many lawyers, and again, I'm not against lawyers because you got to have a lawyer when you're fighting another lawyer. But but we got more lawyers the whole planet basically combined. I saw that number a few years ago. We can check it. But we've got we're graduating more lawyers than anybody else in the world. I know that. I mean, it's a joke. Uh, I think it's like more than the whole Western world. We have more lawyers, 
and it's just bringing and they all just they, they can just twist things exactly we don't need more lawyers we need more doctors and more engineers and more scientists and yes more women but 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 i don't mean weirdo lawyer women from billionaire families we need real patriot women and we need we do need quote minorities but there's great smart libertarian people of every race color and creed we need to break the paradigm of how they give us these false choices of establishment republican and democrat how could someone not support trump when he clearly has the establishment crapping their pants i'm sorry exactly exactly i mean i like jfk i see him as a jfk but we all know what happened to jfk i see hillary clinton as the whore of babylon you know she really is the the mother of harlots and she rides in on an eight-headed octa-headed dragon you know it's a depic depiction you know in the bible and she is the worst of the worst she is a killer of killers i was a trained killer in the u.s army for infantry she scares me she really does i mean just how how just blatantly disregard it for life well, she constantly gets life. on tv and goes i kill people kill <laughs> and then like uh, and foreign governments are like whoa nobody does that as you know i mean that is scary you're absolutely right god bless you great points i mean i don't know what to say anymore I am, I've never been more concerned for myself and my family in this country. And, I, and people go, well, I'm just worried about myself. We're all connected. That's why when they, liberals act like they have this monopoly on caring about people or monopoly on not being racist, they're the most race-obsessed losers. Because, look, I remember when I was in high school, I had a bunch of jobs, and I was somewhat competent compared to most people that were 17 or 18. But I would get in my parents' business and say, I don't think you, I don't like that rug or why are you doing this? Everything upset me, you know, and it was like, there's time for you to move out. This year's time for you to run your own life. And as I got more and more stuff in my life, I'm less worried about what my neighbor's doing. I'm less worried about, hey, you run your own life. I got mine. And it's such an immature f form of arrested development with these leftists. They're little kids. They want to run everybody else's life. That's not liberal. I don't, libertarians don't want to run your life. I don't like the right-wing folks trying to run people's lives. It turns into the whole drug war and all these other frauds. It's just, I'm Americana. I, I, I want what Kurt Russell wants. I want 1776. I want Americana. I want the free market system. I want laissez-faire. This is not laissez-faire, too big to fail, mega banks. That's crony capitalism holding us hostage. I want my country back right now. And I'm not here to be told what language to use or how I'm a racist and I'm a bigot. It doesn't make me guilty. It makes me angry. Because I know deep down inside what I stand for. I'm so, I don't even call it prideful. I am, I, I want people to succeed. And, and it's not like I convinced myself of that. It is insulting. It is insulting to tell me because the color of my skin, what I feel and what I need to do and what I, all this crap. And it's insulting to everybody else who isn't part of this, the, the, what the media is creating is not reality. And I know we all know that, but think about it. It's a bunch of young people and folks that are confused and can't get jobs and the, there's not really a future and, and it's all weird and the media is just all just, you know, fight with each other and blah, blah, blah. And you've got to go out in the world and make your bones. And you don't go out and do that by being a good fisherman or a good hunter or a good, you know, basket weaver, talking about thousands of years ago, or being, you know, a good person that comes up with medicines a shaman or whatever, you don't go out and have those, those traditional roles. They're all gone. So there's all this modern society. And so you supposedly go out and you, 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 know, you go through the rites of passage through this or through that. And we've had a lot of institutions, some good, some bad. But the old institutions were at least based on primitive human activity and the rites of passage. They're getting rid of the rites of passage. And the new rite of passage is running around being racist, screaming and yelling and beating people up and not knowing you're the same thing as a KKK member. I don't know what it is about KKK members, but it's like fat, dumb, uh, stupid, mindless idiots. I look at these Black Lives Matter people. I mean, you just, just, just if you remove the pigment out of the skin, you got a KKK member. I mean, it's so annoying. We're not getting to the stars, ladies and gentlemen, with this type of behavior. And a lot of folks go, well, I write it all off. I don't care. We're not going anywhere. Then blow your brains out. Seriously, if you think the world's over and it's all crap, and but, but you want to be politically involved. I love how they always want to run everything, but then there's no future and blah, blah, blah. No, there's a great future. You just need to get out of the way or join the team. And by the way, joining the team doesn't mean agreeing with me. It's 
looking around the universe and understanding that what we're being hit with is synthetic, is not natural, and is meant to hurt you. You know everything coming out of mainstream media is meant to make you absolutely dumber than the rock and, and sick and under their control. Why then, when the entire power structure is against Donald Trump, and the entire power structure wants Hillary Clinton, and the entire power structure is involved in all this. I mean, look at this gay black guy yelling at another young black man. He's got a, you know, his gay sticker on, and he's saying Donald Trump doesn't like gays or black people and wants to ship blacks to Africa. If you're a TV viewer, it's on screen. Donald Trump was giving interviews to, 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 to the advocate and gay publications and calling for equal rights for people 30 years ago. Donald Trump is trying to stop Gays being thrown off cliffs, Hillary takes money from the very people that do it and is launching invasions for them. But it doesn't matter because this idiot, this arrested development giant fat toddler, nothing against fat people, I've been fat too. Not all fat people, I'll be fat people are smarter than anybody I know, but I'm saying this stereotype, it's a fat toddler baby going, nah, 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 nah. I want something. You're not going to get anything from the robber barons. Anything they give you is poison. This guy's a moron. God, I'm sick of these. Excuse me, Lord. I, okay, I'm going to your calls. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing better here. I'm going to your calls. Who's been holding the longest now? Hmm. Riddle me this. James, and then we'll go to others. James in Texas was a Bernie Sanders supporter. Where are you now? Uh, I'm in Texas, sir. No, I'm saying where are you? Who, who are you supporting now? Oh, Donald Trump. So you really are a Bernie supporter and you really are supporting Trump now? Absolutely. Well, that makes a lot more sense to me. I mean, she stole your vote. I mean, uh, so, so give me your perspective. Well, I I started to see like what the DNC was uh, doing, and yeah, they did steal all the Bernie Sanders uh, uh, votes. I, in my mind, like it, it was completely rigged. And you know, I was on the train for so long where you know the media, like I was watching the news at the time, and the media kept playing bits and sound clips of Donald Trump and saying, oh, he's a racist. And I was like, oh, man, this guy's a maniac. But then after I started noticing that they were stealing the election, I uh, went and started watching full Donald Trump uh, speeches. And I started to realize, I'm like, I was like, he's not a racist at all. No, his trade speech was, was one of the most great, greatest speeches ever given about a presidential candidate. It's just beautiful. I mean, it was, it was a declaration that we're getting up off our knees. The surrender is over. I'm sick of watching this country surrender. Exactly. And then, like, my biggest problem here lately has been Bernie Sanders' surrender to uh, Hillary Clinton. Oh, like, makes me sick. It, people don't, I don't think a lot of people understand the utter de devastation that that caused to so many young people and young voters that's what she's all so about people. it's what she's all about she's the most fascistic corporate wickedness she's not even a socialist the plan they cooked up with obama with with mitt romney is a screw job for insurance companies to rob everyone i mean bernie sanders to me is lower than hillary clinton because of what he did to young voters like i myself i'm 30 but to be to disillusion that many people at such a young age I think was one of the most damaging things that any potential or any politician period has ever done to a younger generation of Americans. Absolutely. God bless you. I appreciate your call. And look, I get, I don't like Sanders the person because I know he's a fake and a fraud and I know, but, but, but a lot of what he stood for on the surface, NAFTA and GAP being a scam, big rich families being partially tax exempt, uh, insider deals, um, yeah, if you're going to let them have corporate socialism, then give it to the people. Listen, if you're going to have QE Unlimited, deliver the money to the grassroots. I, look, if we're going to just print money, it's going to cause a problem down the road, but we can actually build some infrastructure. I'm not saying do that, but it's much more moral than letting the globalists have it all and then saddle us with the debt. Deliver money directly to poor people. Boom. Some of them are going to go drink themselves to death. Others people can actually you know help build themselves up. But that's not how economics works. <laughs> And you got to take it from somebody else. And you're going to take it from is yourself a few years down the road and your kids because that money's going to be devalued, which is the same thing. Everything comes back on you. And so 
All I know is everything's teetering on the edge of collapse. All the elites are building, you know, bunkers and trauma rooms and helicopter escape pads. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. And by the way, when I get around rich people and stuff, and I mean really rich people, they are like asking me what to do. They're not, there's no more debating, okay? You notice everything we talk about now is pretty much just almost passe, right? That means victory for InfoWars if we act on it. There is no doubt that Hillary is evil and will want to make you poor. I don't completely trust Trump, okay? I'm not stupid. But the things he's saying are irrevocably damaging to the new world order. And physiologically, psychically, culturally, that's all money in the bank for Trump. I mean, I'll just say it. I, uh, I'm emotional once I've made my cold decisions about things. But I get a warm feeling in my chest when I think about what Donald Trump's doing. And I, I've never had that for Ron Paul or anybody else. I've admired Ron Paul, appreciate him, all the rest of it. I don't have a... A, an actual emotional feeling, and I'll tell you why it is. I know how much danger Donald Trump's in. And I can tell you he's for real. Here's the problem. JFK was for real. They came to him with a plan, L.L. Lemonster, Curtis LeMay, to sneak attack with hydrogen bombs Russia, and he fired them and freaked out, and then they had another plan the deep state came in with a socialist plan that was already there going, oh, let's merge with Russia and bring in all this stuff. And then he did stuff like, well, I'm going to abolish the Federal Reserve. I'm going to cut taxes. Before. He was doing all sorts of stuff he thought was good, but he was being misguided. I mean, just because Trump's a good guy and really smart doesn't mean he isn't going to get misguided or have weird stuff go on. Look, we're not out of the park. I mean, we're not out of the woods here. We're not out of Mordor here. We get Donald Trump elected. I, I just... It's the resistance. It's the struggle. It's the trying to do something. It's the seeing somebody who I know they're afraid of. Man, let me tell you, that's not a put on. They are scared of Donald Trump. And he has been like a sleeper cell for decades against them. But really, he was always against NAFTA again. He wrote books about how they're screwing America over. He isn't out to get the country. That's it. Now, he could be bad. I couldn't imagine if I was president, even though I know a lot of things. I can't imagine. It's such a crazy world. It, it's, it's, and you, you do one thing, you think it's going to do something, it does something completely different. It's, it's, it just takes a lot of wisdom. I just know this, folks. We can ask for your support. We can ask for you to spread the word because we're, we're having huge effects. I mean, this is the place that has the biggest bang for the buck when it comes to spreading the word. But bigger than that, I just ask you to pray for the broadcast. Pray for us next week in Cleveland. And our crew going on to uh, Philadelphia, David and I, the rest of the crew after that. That's, that's going to be a circus. And to pray for your own self and your own family. And even if you're not a Christian or religious, I think if you just open yourself up to the universe and God, because God's free will, and just say, God, you know, can you help me with discernment? Can you help me? God need, God didn't like the devil. The devil blows the doors off like Darth Vader and comes in. You know, God, you got to ask God in. That's how God judges countries, too. God just pulls back and lets evil come in. The truth is God didn't do any of it. He did all of it, but none of it. You see how that works? Kind of a Zen thought, isn't it? We'll be back with your call straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones. But largely Hillary Clinton's comments here today, John, were based around the recent violence that we have seen. The police involved shootings of black men in Minnesota, in Louisiana, and then the killing of white police officers by a black gunman in Dallas. That was really uh, what she based her comments on around today. And remember, Hillary Clinton has some vulnerabilities herself, even as she calls for criminal justice reform because of her support in the 1990s for anti-crime legislation that ultimately helped contribute to this era of mass incarceration that she now uh, speaks out uh, again. Uh, we just lost. Uh, we just lost Brianna Keeler, who was in Springfield, Illinois, where Hillary Clinton just spoke. You heard. By Hillary the way, was I want to hire Brianna Keeler. I, I want to hire her. She gets up there. She, look, the Clintons are the ones that got the laws changed and then made incredibly racist statements. I mean, everybody understands the numbers, right? Because you know, it makes me sick when I go on InfoWars, and I see it everywhere, and a lot of it's bots with, with all the racist comments towards black people. And because and, and, you know, they got the racist black people, they're racist bots, and they're making the you know, 
white devil statements back. You do know that despite the fact that Africans were forcibly brought here and all the things that went on and happened, some cases just as horrible as you see in the movie, sometimes totally different stories. The point is it was much more diverse than that. You do understand that they ended up building a lot of industries and businesses and science and culture and art when they were being oppressed. That's how it works. Adversity makes men, prosperity makes monsters, as the French historian and politician scholar Victor Hugo said. That which kill you, that which does not kill you only makes you stronger. I'm not saying it's good people that are oppressed. I'm just saying that per capita scientific development, per capita founding universities and businesses and inventions and 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 just revolutionizing uh, machine work and I mean just all over the country, you would go to the black machinist and the black uh, metal workers and and you would go to them. And there was definitely racism and fights and crazy stuff going on and, and the clam was like a mafia that would just kind of go around extorting everybody. That was after it was first set up at the end of the Civil War when you had to they had to cover the horses up and everything because there was northern occupation. And then it was like a, you know, rebel force or whatever. But then, of course, everything turns into something very corrupt. That's, that's how all this works. But I, it's so frustrating to actually know history and then to see government come in in the 50s and 60s with LBJ. And I'm not going to quote him here, all the racist quotes. They're well known. They're in letters. They're recorded. They're on record. You think the social engineers are dumb when they say, we're going to give you enough money to live every month, but you can't have a man in the house, and by the way, have as many kids as you can? So you'd have a nation of children raising children to be beta tested on by the government with everything from diseases to cultural brainwashing, and now you see the weapon. <laughs> That's sick. That's something that aliens would come up with. And I'm not saying they're really aliens. I just look at this, and it's like we're all fighting with each other. And it's real. If you're a white person walking down the street in Dallas and three black guys jump out when you're 15 years old and try to kill you. I guarantee you there isn't probably one out of a million black people out there that has been physically attacked by white people as many times as I've been attacked by racist black people. And I'm not some bleeding heart liberal. I am so glad that happened. I'm serious. I, I mean, that because I also Dallas is a violent place. One of the most violent places in the country. You used to have more violence than Chicago. And I was a free spirited person. I don't want to go off of these whole stories, but. If a small percentage of black males are racist and killing each other, it's, it's just, it's tribalism. Humans are tribal because you're wearing blue, you're wearing red. When I was in high school, you better not wear a red shirt or a blue cap or something. I mean, I'd be at a friend's house in the part of town and the police pull over and say, get up against the car. What are you doing wearing this blue baseball cap? Well, it's a blue baseball cap, man. Well, that's a gang hat. Do I then hate police forever because of that? What I'm getting at here is, I'm going to your calls. There is psychological warfare going on. It's a fact. And you can buy into it, and then it seems real when you're under the mind control. It's mind control. And there's real elements to the mind control. But they're shocking you, shocking you, shocking you, Pavlovianly, to control you. And I'm telling you right now, the most racist people I've ever been around are liberals. In New York, in Chicago, at events, or in college, or wherever, they'll just, you'll be sitting there with them, and all of a sudden, they'll start saying racist stuff, and I'm like, is this some test or something? Because I'm not into this. They're like, oh, well, no, blah, blah, blah. I mean, let me tell you, that's who they are. And they love managing and running everybody. That's why they accuse libertarians and stuff that are against all this of being white saviors and all this. Because, see, they're the ones being a white savior. I don't want to save anybody but your freedom. I just want you left alone, live your own life, free association, be with who you want, do with what you want. Just, just, just don't screw me over. See how that works? And then if I like your music, or I like how you cook, or I like the science you have, or I like hanging out with you, or I like your jokes, I'll then you'll be my friend. 
But it isn't this whole force thing that's actually creating more division. And I know I'm on a rant about this now. It's just that I know the Democratic Party in the South. And they're the weirdest bunch of people you've ever seen. They are, they are the Ku Klux Klan. They are the Dixie Mafia. They run the show still. A lot of them are Republicans now. Rick Perry. That guy went to a KKK hunting lodge. I mean, he's the real deal. And nobody cares if you're Schwarzenegger and wear a Nazi belt buckle and say Heil Hitler because the, the ADL gives you awards. That's what I mean. It's all upside down. The people pushing race are the ones that are the race controllers. Because really, racism is, is, a, is, a, is a cult. It's a cult of control. And, and see, people that obsess on it, they aren't the racist. They're the race controllers. It isn't a, the dumb people on the bottom become racist. The people on top, it's like joining a devil worshiper cult or something. It all then becomes about what group you're in, and then you get little goodies because you're in that group. And Lord, I know I probably had privileges in my life because maybe I was good looking, or maybe I was well spoken, or I was white, whatever. But there were times I, I had bad things happen to me because of how I looked. I mean, I don't claim to be a beach, Mr. Beach Boy today, but when I was 20, I mean, I was about as good looking as it got. And man, men and women would be mean to me. They would be angry. And it wasn't until I was older. And got a little uglier. I was like, folks are nicer to me now because I don't look like a Calvin Klein model anymore. But see, you get young people all scared thinking there's racism everywhere and everybody's out to get them. And oh my gosh. And then they see stuff on TV and there's a chip on their shoulder. And then they act like everybody's out to get them and all this stuff's going on. And then pretty soon, yeah, people act weird towards you. And they're t the whole country's being turned into arrested development children that can be jacked over. You look at cults, the followers are just a bunch of scared weirdos who think they follow the leader and do what they're told they're somehow going to reach nirvana. No, you must develop yourself. You must go through the fire. You must be tested. That's what makes you strong. But I went on a whole jag, and I'm sorry, I went on, I went on your calls. I went on a whole jag about Hillary and the, and the South and the Dixiecrats and all the rest of it because I know who they are. And I'm not even saying at the end of the day, all of them are evil or whatever. They're in their own cult. But man, I just, being a white person in the South, I know how stuff really works. And I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that Republicans, voters, are usually Christian, middle-class people who are scared and not racist. I, I, I mean, I, ha I don't think I've ever heard Republicans say racist things. You get in a room with Democrats, it is the most god-awful thing you have ever heard in your life. And it's just a sick joke to me. I mean, this, this stuff is sick. This is sick. This is sick. This is sick. It is so sick that I have to sit here and watch these brainwashed idiots run around like morons, financed by George Soros, and I know I'm 100% right. And I can't reach these people. It's like beating your head up against a brick wall. But I know I'm reaching some people. And if the establishment ever starts using the Republican Party as its takeover arm, I'll, I'll go after them. Everybody knows that. But I'm telling you right now, they're using the left worldwide for a takeover. And they're not bringing in 5 million Muslims into Europe because they want to help them. They are going to use those folks. And in the end, they're going to scapegoat them when they invade with the new crusades and wipe out almost all those people. And by the way, that's getting prepared. I want to stop the invasion now so it doesn't get to that point. I'm doing myself and them a favor. I really look at the moral judgment of things and what is honorable under universal law. And I morally shouldn't have to pay for people being brought here. And I sure shouldn't have to pay when they're being made to be a political weapon. And I sure shouldn't have to pay. This is Islam in 60 seconds, okay? And, and why it's not compatible in the West. There isn't one Islamic country in the world that's tolerant of other people's religions and freedoms. The most moderate are intolerant. Almost all of them are radical and orthodox now and will kill you 
the second or third time you're caught preaching the gospel. They will imprison you the first time. They will torture you the first time. They will murder you the first moment you're caught in a homosexual act. They treat women like dogs or lower. They are incompatible, and the social engineers know full well they are basically bringing space aliens into the West. And before the New York Times says, I believe, I'm saying they're the equivalent. They are alien, alien, and they can be over there. I'm so, sorry for their women. My God, I hope they have a reformation. Man, I hate, I mean, I'm, I love how the left acts like any white male in the West hates women getting ahead. That's the most, that's why they won't, don't want you to ever have kids. Because the big secret is, once a woman has sons and a man has daughters, if there was any weird stuff between the sexes before, there is no, no difference when it comes down to wanting everybody to get ahead and everybody to be successful and everybody to be fulfilled and be good in the eyes of God. That's all I care about. And I love how the state and stuff goes, oh, you ought you to ought, you ought put your girls in a camp. I went and looked at some of these camps they're pushing. This is like hardcore feminist brainwashing. Put chips on their shoulders. They're going to teach your daughters what their identity is. You just hand your kids over to induct them to a bunch of freaks who want to sabotage your sons and daughters. The state and its systems wants to teach your children their identity. Their identity comes from their culture, their parents, their genetics, their experiences, and their choices. They will develop their identity, but you don't want to give them time because you're not a liberal. You're a dirtbag, psychic, vampire, piece of crap that can't deal in the society of men and women and real intellectual debate. You have to sit there as adults jacking with kids because you're perverts. Even if you don't want to put the little kids in a bed, you want to psychically rape their brains. Yes, I see you. Let's go back to the phone calls. Let's go fast now. I keep saying that. Robert in California, you're on the air. Hey, God bless America, my friend. God bless you, my friend. Go ahead. Yeah, anyway, it's a, the whole world scripted. The, the whole planet's being consolidated into, you know, mass um, concentration camps. They're just trying to put the mass populations in certain areas. With arrogant, so spoiled go, brats running around like Trigglypuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I've dealt with three presidents of the United States. I've had uh, clearances with the defense. I've worked with U.S.-Russian intelligence, uh, you know, relations and our projects together. And uh, as far as Hillary's concerned... And that's uh, my dealings with the White House. It was basically, the Clintons were basically the Beverly Hillbillies in Washington, D.C. It was bad. It was trailer trash in the White House. These people are completely <laughs> dysfunctional. She has mental issues. She can't be president. Um, the thing is, I know their campaign, what they're going to do. Hillary's going to do the stupid bra list thing. You know, women voting for her, don't wear your bra. I've read the script of what she's going to do, all her stupid crap. I know Trump. I know his contacts, what he's involved in. Um, it's, 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 it's very scripted. But, okay, you know, okay. Well, listen, 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 Trump listen. I'll skip the break if need be. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying I believe you or don't believe you. You sound an incredible guy. Are you saying Trump scripted in on it as well? Um, it's a, it's a good possibility. If he picks Sarah Palin, he's a hundred percent shill because I know Sarah Palin's Exxon mobile contacts and how much money she's been given and the funnel to him later on. But uh, it's, it's a possibility if he picks her. The thing is he needs a Hispanic male or a female VP to get in because Hillary has the gay community, lesbian, gay community, um, has every female in the country, uh, trendies. That's a huge bay. And, and, and uh, Trump is basically Trump confused people. If you look at Caucasians, males and Caucasians, I mean, they look autistic. They look like they're under some sort of brain dead trance. <laughs> I mean, the real. I spoke no, to I agree. The I agree. But I mean, let's expand on that. Well, they're not getting this Valhalla. They supposedly, you know, just get this magic wand. Most of them are being are seeing society crumble around them. They're, they're seen as the most uncool thing on Earth. Yeah, on average, they are wandering around like zombies. Uh, it's, it's, it's arrested development. It's the sports. It's all of it. Uh, but look, they're making it the racial and sexual component. That's what Hillary's doing, and they're definitely going with that. Uh, what do you think will happen if Hillary does get into office? 
Um, well, the thing is, every country is going to laugh at us. You have a, a woman running the United States of America. That is in itself is a joke, considering that no woman has run any major military offensive on this planet as long as we know for millions of years there's no evidence of this ever taking place, okay? For one, Russia has submarines right off the coast of California that have been there forever, enough firepower to wipe out this country. I'm concerned, and I'm in contact with people within the United States, Russian people. There are sleeper cells in Russia, and I have contact. I've always had contact with U.S. and, like I said, U.S. and Russian relations. They worked in defense for a well, long Well, let me time. expand on this, sir. There's actually been quite a few times that there have been women actually over huge empires and uh, women have launched a lot of successful offensives and takeovers have you heard of queen elizabeth right oh yeah i, I know about this I'm, I'm talking about modern day warfare you know and that's you know medieval stuff <laughs> my concern is women tend to actually start more wars historically yeah I'm, oh yeah if you were to look at queen elizabeth and what you know well, a lot of other ones I, I you know i mean look at look at there's a bunch of women running the state department right now they're a bunch of warmongers I know. It, it, it's crazy. You're working on emotion. You're not working on logic. Oh, here, we're going to break. Uh, I'm not going to skip this break. We're, we're, we're going to go ahead and go in here, and, and then we're going to be back with more calls. I appreciate your call, Robert. Stay with us. By the way, there's a very powerful article, uh, that I'm going to spend a few minutes in the next hour uh, talking with Anthony Gucciardi about. Paul Watson's done the research. I, I, I knew there was some problems with Mike Pence, kind of a mainline Republican, and, and maybe Trump signaling to the establishment, hey, I'm not that dangerous. Let me in. Uh, but they're still not giving him money, so it's, 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 it's pointless. I don't go for lesser of two evils, uh, but Mike Pence would be a terrible choice for BP, for Trump. That's the headline. Paul Joseph Watson, governor of Indiana, supports stealth amnesty, TPP, NAFTA, and then it just goes over. I remember Pence saying uh, calls to ban Muslims from entering the U.S. are offensive and unconstitutional. So Pence has also shot his mouth off uh, at Trump. Trump said... If you're not going to vet anybody and even check their IDs, which they are still not doing, and just bring them in, you got to cut it off. It may just be a little while until we have a system back in place. Yeah, if there's a gas leak. Remember, like eight, nine years ago, we had a gas leak in the kitchen. I didn't need to go on the Internet to know what to do. I mean, I just knew growing up, I'm not a rocket scientist. I went and I turned the gas off at the side of the house. I had a tool to do it, dug around the garage and got it. And I was reading the other day that most people, you know, call the fire department or call a handyman, fine. But I really think that's what's happened. More than anything, we are separated from the land. We're separated from reality. We're just separated from normal human behavior. And so people can be really, really conned. I think that's a big part of it. And that's why they want to get us totally dependent because there's a major global awakening happening, but there's a large portion of folks that are still dumbed down, and they believe if they can hold those people hostage politically, they'll be able to vote to checkmate the minority of us, of every race, color, and creed, who are bound by the fact that we are awake, sentient, conscious beings that want to be free, that want to be free-range humans, that want to be free to do dangerous things like rock climbing or ultralight or space travel. You know, The nanny state is about capturing humanity turning us into Chinese princesses. I don't see anybody else that uses those analogies, but I need to do a special video on don't let them turn you into a, a Chinese princess. The Africans did it. The Mesoamericans did it. A certain extent, ancient Europeans did it. The, 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 the Japanese did it. But they would bound women's feet where they couldn't walk. That's a way to control your wife, you know, the queen. Oh, you're so royal, you don't trim your fingernails. They're two feet long. And... African tribes, the rings around the women's necks, where if you took those rings off, they suffocate and die. Everybody's like, ooh, you're a movie star. You know, your feet are bound, all this. It's all, like, this has been done before. It's what the nanny state is. It's got to stop. Oh, but it's so stylish. Liking Matt Damon, liking all this trendy stuff is just as dumb as deforming your feet. Now, I'll tell you, a woman looks good in high heels. Still not good for your feet, but not that destructive. That is quite an invention. Mm. I love the Lord's creation, so I'll just tell you right now, I'm red-blooded. Uh, we're going to go to break, come back, and finish up with your calls. Jonathan, and then we're going to talk to, uh, who else is up here? Harmony, Zeke, Steve, and Isaac. I'm going to get to every single one of you. I promise, bam, 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 we're talking about the VP pick. Is it really who they claim it is? Mike Pence. Uh, we're going to review some of that. I'm going to print that article. And then we're also going to be talking with Anthony Gucciardi 
uh, as well as he takes over the broadcast. And as I get ready to gear up, shoot special reports ahead of going to Cleveland this Saturday or this Sunday. Uh, oh, by the way, the special ends today, and it will end. It'll be over on the storable food. We've extended it over a week. Um, that ends today on the highest quality storable foods everybody needs, obviously, to not be dependent on the system. Now's the time to not play games and get it. My view plus the sports broadcast so you can't lose, whether it's a month or a year or whatever, if your whole family is there, a lot of other survival stuff. And 25% off on our top-of-the-line True Nutraceutical DNA Force that just affects the whole body. Go find out why it's so important. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com. All right, Anthony Gucciardi's coming up, co-hosting with me. I'm punching out in 20 minutes, and I'm taking your phone calls right now. Jonathan in the great state of Tennessee. What do you think of the supposed VP pick? Paul Watson thinks it's really horrible. Well, you know what? I don't think it, it does. I don't care. I think I trust Donald Trump, and it doesn't matter who he picks. They're going to the communist news network. They're going to dissect them they're going to say anything they've ever done we know how that works so i just encourage people that are supporting trump to realize that that's part of their plan he could pick jesus sure sure ma'am ma'am ma 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 i hear what you're saying but paul watson i know is a good guy he's smart he just dug into the basics of pence and pence is pro nafta pro get uh, trump is against that uh, and, and all I'm saying is you're supposed to pick somebody that you agree with, and Pence shot his mouth off a lot about Trump. Now, now all I'm saying is he's a lot better than Newt Gingrich. Man, I hope it's him over Gingrich. But I'm just saying, uh, I mean, do you have any concerns about that? Well, you know, sure I do. I have concerns about why, everything. But I will tell you this. I'm more concerned about Hillary Clinton and like the first caller being a, worried about torture. Oh, I'm you know absolutely. Well, no, we know Hillary's is, is true evil. That's why the establishment's behind her. I get it. I'm for Trump because the establishment uh, is 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 uh, totally uh, scared of him. But if he brings in a bunch of establishment people, he better watch his back. I, you know what? I I pray for his safety because I know what you're saying, and Alex, I agree with most everything you say and well, ma'am, it's okay for you to disagree with me i get your point you know the guy's like well trump wants to torture isis so he supports the cops torturing us no he doesn't right and they, and that's what i want to say to that young guy i want to say do you realize that they're going to cut our heads off if we believe something that's an well, idea i mean look uh, here's the deal yeah look the globalists are bringing in people that are totally incompatible and they're putting them in charge of the middle east Boy, that shows Obama and Hillary are really bad news. I mean, Obama knew ISIS and Al-Qaeda that they funded to take over Syria was going to kill every Christian they got their hands on. I mean, that is cold-blooded. I mean, Obama is a conscious murderer of Christians, and I knew it for sure. we got to find this clip. We played it a few months ago. He was laughing. It was I think the headline was Obama talks about why we can't take only Christian refugees. Well, it wasn't only. He goes, oh, come on. You know, everybody gets to get out. Not just the Christians. We're going to be fair. He doesn't let Christians get out. It's like 0.3%. He knows that country was 20-something percent Christian. They're murdering them. They're murdering them. They're raping their daughters. And, and he sits there and he is evil, man. That guy, I used to talk to people that know him, and I used to think, oh, he's not that bad. He's just an ESPN guy. He just likes to have a good time, you know. And they're like, no, he's evil. And now I realize it. Obama, Obama wants to murder Christians. Obama, I'm going to say that again. Obama wants to murder Christians. I appreciate your call. He does murder Christians. He directs the murder of them with that blood drinker, Hillary. I mean, oh, I'll tell you, boy. You, you sit around TV bragging about killing people? You're, you're, you're a bloodthirsty piece of trash. Anthony, what do you got coming up after the break? So the uh, free Syrian rebels, too. Don't forget about that. Going around doing some heinous stuff in Syria, chopping heads off and village centers, reveling in it. Well, we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff. University students who are criticizing Black Lives Matter face death threats, even though they say, hey, it might not be a good thing. Uh, China hacked U.S. banking regulators, and the whole system is kind of a big joke. 70% of people say they have their incomes becoming stacked. We're going to talk about it straight ahead. I think you need to check his mic. It's a little bit low. We'll stay on the ball. Because fighting tyranny isn't just like having to actually stay on a bull. It just means you got to have the will to never give up, never give in. And we will win because 
They always have to censor our free speech. They always have to shut reporters off that expose Hillary and point out laws she supported and pushed for, mandatory sentencing on CNN, because the truth will defeat them. And no matter how many fancy technologies they roll in, they're going to backfire on them every time, just like the Internet has done. Anthony Gucciardi's taking over in T-minus 10 minutes, 11 minutes from now. An incredible article by Paul Watson. I had some concerns about Pence. And Paul is here hoping that this is um, that this is just Trump testing the waters. That's not the word I have from Stone, that this is a leak uh, and that it's not even known to be an accurate one. I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, we'll find out, obviously, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern. We'll be here covering it uh, live, obviously, uh, even before we go on the main show. But this is an excellent article, he, and I'm going to your calls right after that. He says, uh, reports that Mike Pence is set to be announced as Donald Trump's VP pick tomorrow have set off alarm bells amongst many Trump supporters because of the governor's Indiana's pro-amnesty, pro-TPP advocacy. Making Pence VP is seen by many as a way of calming establishment conservatives and uniting the GOP, although... Why pandering to conservatives would have failed over and over again? John McCain, Mitt Romney, et cetera, et cetera, is suddenly a good idea. It remains a mystery. Here are more reasons why picking Pence doesn't make sense. While Trump has promised to build a wall, Pence has been savaged by res respected conservatives like Pat Buchanan and Phyllis Schlafly for advocating stealth amnesty in the form of guest worker program. While Trump has campaigned against job-killing foreign trade deals, Pence vehemently supports NAFTA CAFTA and the TPP. Pence voted for the Iraq war, which Trump was against, and opposed a withdrawal date even after it became apparent that U.S. involvement in the country was a disastrous policy. Pence once advocated conversion therapy for homosexuals. It just goes on, uh, which is just saying that's going to really, that that isn't what Trump supports. Uh, Pence is not a woman. Picking a female would have completely neutralized Hillary Clinton's sole campaign platform, one bolstered by the media, which is the fact that Hillary has a you-know-what. Hopefully, the Pence leak is just the Trump campaign testing the waters before a final call is made. 60 seconds from Gucciardi, and I'm going right to Harmony, Steve, Zach, Isaac, go ahead. No, exactly. Why pander to the establishment? The whole point is that people are ready for something new. They don't want the same old establishment system. They want something clearly that Trump was for in the beginning, or now, currently, when he's talking about, hey, this system has failed. 70% say their incomes are stagnant. 70% also say that they hate the direction of the country. 60% of the people, if I recall properly, say they don't even like the government uh, in general, in the past like yeah, 20 years, it's, it's much it's higher clear. than that. But yeah, yeah. The, the latest is 70 percent. That's another poll, but nine percent approval rate for Congress. Absolutely, Anthony. Um, let's go to some of these phone calls. Let's. We got Alex in Mexico uh, just called in, but they'll probably Anthony will probably get to you later. I do want to talk to you though. Former Bernie supporter as well. Uh, it's just always cool to get calls from outside the country. Uh, we got Harmony in Virginia. Thanks for holding her on the air. Hey, hey, how's it going? Fine. Thanks for uh, calling. I, all right. So I totally agree uh, with the last guy. We should not have a woman president. Now is just not the right time. One. And two, not Hillary. I have been against her from day one. Never, never Hillary. But, but I mean, bad, why, why not have a woman president now? I mean, it, it, I mean, if she was in, informed and a patriot and, and aware and, and, and had the knowledge, uh, I mean, women have been good leaders in, in, in history. But right now, when you've got her in bed with Muslims, who, I mean... Oh, absolutely. No, she's women. disqualified yeah, yeah. being in bed with, yeah. them, with the nastiest, uh, nastiest jihadis. Absolutely. But that's what I'm saying is, is Muslims, especially in other countries, are going to see it as, oh, we got America right where we want them. They're going to... I'm not saying I feel that way about women. No, I'm no, I get it. I understand. You're saying from the perspective you know? of the world. Now, let me tell you, my son is a four-time vet. He's an amputee, wounded warrior. He's still active duty, and he's deployable. He was in the Invictus Games recently. You know, um, here's, here's the method to the madness with Pence, if it is, in fact, Pence. That's what I'm saying. Is, and I think more, more of us believe this than you know. Um, we need strength. We need men, real men, like my son. We need them in charge. We need them now more than ever. It's the timing. Is, has a lot to do with it. And again, Hillary just not being the right person for any job. Now, I have worked for men and I've worked for women. I will work for a man any day. Women in power, you know, there's no guarantee they're looking out for well, you. Well, on average, point. they are more vindictive. There's a lot of other issues. I mean, there's a reason in history things kind of shake out the way they do. All, all I know is 
is that if there's a woman qualified who's a patriot, and, the, and, and that's who I'd go for because women can do a really great job. I mean, it's kind of like, it's all statistical. And, and the difference is I can't have a baby. So there is a difference between the sex, sexes. It is a fact. I appreciate your call, Harmony. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to, but hold the longest now. That'd be Isaac in Texas. And then I'm going to go the, the Bernie supporters. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. Uh, just want to uh, make a comment here regarding uh, Donald Trump. Yes. Uh, when he first came out and said that he was uh, running for president, uh, to be honest with you, I, I've been all for it. Uh, with his past reputation of building his business. He's a successful businessman. He's obviously smart, uh, intelligent. Yeah, I want um, businessmen. I want businesswomen. I want engineers. I want doctors. I want scientists. I want farmers. I, I, we, we've got 90% lawyers. That's enough. Exactly. And, and then with Trump, he would make the perfect, uh, he seems like the perfect role model to, for anyone that aspires in business and wants to create their own. And uh, sure. So, what do you think of the VP grows. pick? What do you think of the VP pick? I mean, I mean, do you think it's real? I, 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 anyone, anyone but Newt would, you know, anyone but Newt. I, I'm concerned now about uh, Pence uh, it, with the concerns that you raised earlier uh, regarding his uh, connections, and that concerns me. I'll be. That's my point, actually. There, there. When Trump first came out, it, it seems like a perfect fit. He's a great negotiator. He's, a, he, he's, he's intelligent. However, I've seen things along the way, little hints, drops of hints that just are concerns. And I'm sure they've come up as red flags for you, too. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, the, the establishment's hate of him is real. But is it because he's an outsider who isn't hadn't been in their club, and, and they're just afraid he's going to steal their steal their quarry, steal their kill. I mean, that is the that that could be the problem. It, it could be. Uh, it, there's there's just a lot of concerns that are coming out. That uh, obviously, well, well voice voice some of those. The forgiveness statement. I remember that one. That that one threw up a red flag. I mean, uh, honestly, where he he says, you know, I don't believe, you know, I need to be forgiven for anything. He he, he didn't admit. It. Okay, that's cool. It's you know, I, I I let you know that that was the first. The second was the waterboarding, the torture statement, and you know the you know the wall. He I don't really take that as racist. I'm going to be honest with you. That is not a racist uh, statement. I never took it that way. Well, sure, you can have a wall. The thing is, it won't work. You, you actually have to go after, cut off the welfare. I appreciate your call. Interesting points. We'll continue to watch this, and we'll know about tomorrow. Uh, riveting information, obviously, history happening right now. Uh, Steve in Minnesota, thanks for holding. You're on the air worldwide. You were a Bernie supporter. What are you going to do now? Thank you, Alex. Um, I'm a longtime listener, first-time caller, and my kids love the pro <laughs> I'll get that off my back. Thank you here. for your support, um, sir. The stuff you purchased at InfoWars store, it, it makes it all possible. Sure. Thank you. Okay, well, I, I agreed with a lot of what Bernie had to say. And I, one of the big things, I think, is if you know, he wanted to he would, wanted to deschedule marijuana or cannabis. And I think if Trump were to come out and state that he would do That's that. That's a great point. They should lot. decriminalize it. They've still got hemp banned. You can smoke an 18-wheeler of it and not get a buzz. I mean, why is that banned? Because it competes with polyester. Yeah, I just think, you know, you guys talk about the war on drugs and how unconstitutional that is, and I think that if Trump were to come out and just state that he would end the prohibition on cannabis. Sure, I sure, but I mean, I mean, uh, will you ho will you hold your nose and vote for Trump, or will you jump off a cliff and vote for Hillary? I mean, she is the corporate candidate. She is the warmonger. She stole the votes from the Bernie people. I, I mean, I mean... Uh, Trump all the way. So you I are cannot. you are Trump all the way? Yes. Good. Well, please reach out to the Bernie supporters. When, uh, do you talk to other Bernie supporters? And if so, are, I mean, what's oh, the yeah. sentiment? Yeah. What's the sentiment? Uh, well, you know, I'm up in northeastern Minnesota here, and uh, things are quite progressive up here, you could say, <laughs> or maybe not. Sure. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, this, there's not a whole lot of good things that people have to say about about uh, uh, Trump up here. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's... All right, we'll start talking to him, brother, because, I mean, he's not perfect, but he's one of our only shots at trying to... 
really give the globalists a, a, a black eye here. And, and we've got the situation with the Brexit. I mean, this is a protest vote. Enough Clintons, enough Bushes. Oh, I don't know who I'd hate more, a Hillary or a Jeb. I, I just, Hillary's like, was the Clintons were a leaving, a dropping of the Bushes. I mean, it's just, there's no way, it's like, it's like herpes. You just cannot get rid of these people. Gives me a headache thinking about who I dislike more. I, I think it's probably Hillary. She's just such a witch, that Joker thing. At least Jeb acts like he's humble, but, you know, it's kind of like a serial killer. He, he's trying to act like he's nice, but, you know. But with Hillary, it's just full on, ah, like when the vampire, you know, transforms in Fright Night. Oh, you think that's scary? Ah, you know, it's Hillary. Like, oh. I mean, <laughs> by the way, people say she doesn't project strength in the Middle East. Everybody's scared of her. And that's dangerous when people got nukes. The Russians are scared of her. And for a good reason. She's dangerous. She's a lunatic. Uh, let's talk to Zeke in California. Go ahead. You're on the air. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That would be me. Welcome. Go ahead. Right now, yeah, I appreciate it. I uh, just want to preface you know, my statements by saying I've been listening to you for so many years. I can't even keep track how far back it goes. But um, I did want to take a second to address the uh, Trump, you know, Trump situation and asking people that were Bernie uh, supporters whether or not they were going to jump to Trump. And uh, I'm not one of those people. I'm not going to jump to Trump. Just real quick, because I don't even know where it began, really. I, I think if Trump was really sincere about his Make America Great Again thing, and if he was really about empowering, empowering America, he would have been done and set up uh, some type of enterprise, industrial enterprise here in the States. And he's been outsourcing labor and having stuff built well, all over. Uh, no, I hear you. His argument is it's so unfair and everything's so expensive, I can't do it. It won't work. And I've experienced it where I do Made in America, and then people hardly buy it because it costs 30 40% more. And so I'm kind of in that position where I, I mean, we wouldn't exist if we weren't buying it from Mexico or whatever. But I hear you. He could do a national push, have an industrial zone or something, get investors. That, that'd that be a great idea. So, so you, you don't think there's any uh, action behind his talk? No, not at all. I think he's playing people like waving a raw steak in the in the faces of a blindfolded, hungry individual. And then I'm not all in your pockets. I don't know how much you have in the bank. But him as a billionaire, you could easily set up some type of industrial enterprise, have a construction team or something like that. And in, in, in the bigger picture... Well, thing, I think I'm he'd argue that he builds golf courses and hotels and apartment buildings and, and businesses here in America. I mean, he does mainly invest in the United States. I mean, come on now, the people on golf courses, I'm talking about the bread and butter of America. Like I know, brother, but you understand service them. economy like that is what actually creates the mid-level tier jobs. I mean, that that's, I mean, Trump has produced a lot in the country. Well, but again, a golf course versus like construction teams, the people that support them, I think he's playing them the same way uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger played everybody here in California. Oh, I hear you. Well, I knew Schwarzenegger was bad. Oh, my God. That guy was behind the whole Enron, everything, I tell you. And I hated Gray Davis, but it was just like total setup. No, 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 I hear you. So, so will you be supporting Hillary or Trump? Yeah, I mean, I would have to hold my nose and check a box for Hillary, even though, uh, like you just said, the Bushes and the Clintons, we sick of all of them. I mean, sir, I'm not sir. a socialist. Zeke, uh, Zeke, I, I love you, and I appreciate you listening. I appreciate the call, but hands down, Hillary is probably, other than maybe LBJ, one of the most dangerous, racist, demonic people you could ever imagine. Donald Trump is all about Donald Trump, but he wants to be the turnaround guy that makes America great again. He's, he's an egomaniac for real. And I just, there's a reason they're scared of him. He is not to get us, okay? And he's super honest. Yeah, I make my ties in Mexico. I'm not against Mexico. I can make them for a tenth the price. You can't do stuff in America. I want to change that. Mexico's screwing us over. I make stuff in Mexico. I explain it to people. Here, buy the Made in America shirt. It's $25 because it costs me you know, 12, 13, 14 bucks depending on the shirt. Or I can buy one in Mexico for $4. And then I can sell them to you for $9 or $5. I just in the people you vote, you control me. You vote with your dollars. I'm, I try to be the most moral person I can be, but I find it very refreshing that Trump is honest about that. And, and I'm not defending any of this. I'm really concerned about this Pence thing and, and the and, and the amnesty and the open border and the NAFTA and the GATT and the TPP. TPP. I mean, I he better come out and say you know, he's firmly behind Trump and everything. If this is actually who uh, Anthony. I've got to go. I want you to take these calls from Alex in Mexico and Greg and PA and, and, and others. I've got a meeting i got to go to. I, I wish I could listen to the show. 
Uh, we obviously have a special that ends today, and it will end today. Will end today on the storable foods. All the other specials <laughs> at the end. Ten percent off is extended though when it comes to nutraceuticals. Twenty five percent off on DNA Force. These are all products you need. And voting with your dollars makes it all possible. I appreciate all of your support, my friends. Infowars is such an important voice, getting the word out to people everywhere. Infowarslife.com for the 25% off DNA Force. Infowarsstore.com is the umbrella site where you can find everything. Infowarsstore.com. And Anthony, I'm going to segue to you now uh, with, uh, I don't know your view yet. This just broke when I was on air and you were getting ready. Uh, you heard me read Watson's article. Mike Pence would be a terrible choice for uh, Trump's VP. I agree, unless you're talking about Ginrich. I mean, Ginrich, if he comes out and endorses Ginrich, I'm going to have a mini heart attack. Uh, <laughs> but politicians have turned so bad, I almost expect it. <laughs> I just, you know, if that's the case, at least I can start unloading on Trump before he gets in, and I won't feel guilty, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think Trump's for real overall. What do you think, Anthony? Well, you know, I think it's sad. You think about that caller that called in, and what do we talk about? We talk about how people say, oh, I want Hillary just because she's a woman. Then that caller, not, not attacking her, you know, but she says, I don't think we're ready for a woman to lead. And, and, and I, I hear so many people just say these statements about just the most elementary level stuff. They don't talk about any of the details or anything. And we're talking about, you know, the VP pick. You're reading an article, Watson wrote a really good one, about uh, what this guy supports. But instead, on the news, when I was in there getting ready, I hear the news people say things like, well, I don't know if he's strong enough. I don't know. I don't know if he's a, a strong enough person. Like, what does that even mean? They never bring up real issues. It's just nothing. It's That's why we're in so much trouble. It's like his hair looks good, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I don't know if he's if he's fit enough to lead. Right? They don't talk about his actual opinions or his policies. Leading means you take us in a good direction that's moral, constitutional, and you can get the people behind it. That's leadership. I mean, I, I would totally vote for a woman. I'm sure you would, too, if she was actually a good candidate and had our best interest in mind and wasn't an establishment puppet. I would vote for her in one second. I, I, would, I think it would be amazing because then we could get behind a woman and it would be, oh, a woman or whatever. It's a joke when you bring it down to gender. It, it doesn't matter which gender it well, is. Well, I mean, I get her point, though. I understand if, if, if it was from that perspective, you'd, you'd be totally right. I mean, I, I'm not saying you're wrong, but I get the perspective. From the perspective of we don't need a woman because they're not smart, I get you. But... What she's saying is with the Muslim countries and stuff, they'll see that as weak. I get what she's saying, but I wasn't even specifically talking about her. I'm saying the overarching thing of these people debating based on ridiculous factors. No, I you hear know? you. Uh, Anthony, yeah. I'm handing the baton to you. m 4 is only news tonight, 7 o'clock Central. Please continue. All right. Thanks, Alex. You know, it, it, it's I got a stack of news, and it's one of those times where there's so much going on. There's so much craziness going on. Everyone's talking about Donald Trump's VP and everything like that, which we're going to talk about a little bit, too. But there's other news coming out, and it's just as important because sometimes when all the craziness is going on, we miss some of the good stuff, right? We miss some of the gems. So here we have Kerry. You guys may have already heard about this. U.S. will welcome a target of 10,000 Syrian refugees, okay? Of course, everyone's already talked about the vetting process being a failure, but that's fine. The target is 10,000. And instead of debating it, instead of debating the whole refugee situation, I wanted to uh, remind you of something. And that is that Saudi Arabia, we've talked about this many, many times, has 100,000 air-conditioned tents sitting empty. Still, they won't take in Syrian refugees. I mean, there are tents sitting there. No one is in them. Not a single soul. They're perfectly preserved. They're clean. They're air-conditioned. Uh, from the Washington Times, it says, As Saudi Arabia faces mounting criticism for refusing to take in any of the millions of Syrians fleeing conflict in their homeland, it was revealed this weekend that the country has over 100,000 empty air-conditioned tents that could house up to 3 million refugees. So I wanted to bring that up again because I see celebrities and others speaking out and saying we need to bring in the refugees. It's a very sad situation. You know, it is a sad situation. It's a very, very sad situation. But why are we not publicly calling on other countries like Saudi Arabia with 100,000 air-conditioned tents that are empty that could fit 3 million refugees with ease, and it's way closer. It's not going to result in um, coming over to the United States. And Saudi Arabia is a much more congruent nation as opposed to the uh, refugees, which many of them have uh, reported to been, you know, extremists that wanted to kill people in the United States. But no, rather guilt people and say that we're bad for not taking in Syrian refugees, right? 
So also wanted to hit on this. China likely hacked U.S. banking regulator report finds. And it's interesting because this is from Reuters. It didn't just happen. They're just finding out the Chinese government likely hacked computers at the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation in 2010, 2011, and 2013, according to a congressional report on Wednesday that cited an internal investigation by a banking regulator. Now, this is an issue because we don't understand the true depths of our infrastructure that has been completely compromised and hacked into at every level and you know it sounds spooky sometimes like a hacker like there's someone in a a, you know a suit like hacking with all these cool screens and stuff it's actually much much more simple than that oftentimes it's oftentimes that someone very important uh, has a terrible password and someone can grab it from them using a keylogger or something and access everyone's information this happens to corporations all the time our information is not as secure as we think when the nuclear launch codes are zero 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 also you know it raises some red flags but i will be back this is the fourth hour i'm anthony gucciardi it's the alex jones show a lot more coming up and we're going to play a special report that alex did yesterday that is very very powerful stay tuned that's right it's the alex jones show I'm Anthony Gucciardi, and yesterday I shot a video with Alex, or rather Alex shot a video, and I joined in, and it was a great analysis on Black Lives Matter. It was probably the, the best one that I've seen and been a part of, and specifically, it's not just attacking so-called Black Lives Matter and the ideology. It breaks down the ridiculousness of what's going on and how it's really just a symptom of the raw deal that we've been served as a country, and it's a symptom of the political correctness attack on ideology and just a whole, a whole slew of stuff. So we're going to go ahead and play this video and then I'm going to come back and take some more calls and talk about some more news. President Obama had a special visitor today. They had a photo op, but then almost all the three hour meeting was behind closed doors. No, he wasn't meeting with the head of state. He never meets with them for three hours. Hell, not even the Pope for three hours. No, ladies and gentlemen, it was the head of Black Lives Matter. And of course, the head of Black Lives Matter, another community organizer like Obama, lives in a home paid for by George Soros, by George Soros Open Society Foundation menus. Um, so he's bought and paid for in a house with people that are high level minions of the Open Society foundation that has the american people's liberties and freedoms on the menu black lives matter leaders spent three hours with president obama today to demand action in regard to recent officer involved shootings how about demand action with all the cops getting shot on a daily basis now d ray mckesson one of the group's most prominent figures joined several other black lives matter leaders at the white house to bring up concrete action the president can take in order to appease its members. And it goes on from there. Ladies and gentlemen, this isn't about police brutality. It isn't about some of the wrongful shootings that happened that we're totally against. But I'm the guy that wrote books on the police state. I'm the guy that made films about it. And, and I wanted to stop the police from being globalized and federalized and being tools of tyranny. But now it's about federalizing them. It's about the UN running them. It's about breaking them to bring in global control locally under the Strong Cities Initiative. This whole thing is synthetic from the big mega corporations on down to control society and to create a civil war in this nation. I was the first to use that term. Now it's all over the news. And you better believe that while President Obama is meeting with this guy and other leaders of Black Lives Matter, government Soros funded, Justice Department pulling the strings, it's about creating civil unrest to make everything in America about race, not about real economic or cultural issues that matter. Because now America on average is more than quote half minority and they've got the white liberals that will vote however as long as you say it's racial. This is about ending thinking in politics and going all racial, which they claim they were always against. This is the political correctness takeover. This is their full push. This is happening in public schools everywhere. This is their horribly racist plan. They're planning civil unrest coming up at the RNC and DNC and right into the election. This is an attempt to destabilize this country. It's very dangerous. The very same globalists 
Proto-globalists did this in 1917 in Russia, 1949 in China. They mean business. And it is scary that those cops weren't even cold Friday morning in Dallas. And many others were fighting for their lives, and Obama said, we need to reform the police, that's what happened. And Hillary said, white folks need to listen up, as if some white person working a job has something to do with some cop that shoots somebody in the back. This is about selling race war in America, and this is directed by the so-called federal government that's above the law. You better believe this country and this world's in trouble. Now let's get up and go on over here. Now let's talk to Joe Biggs, InfoWars.com reporter, then Anthony Gucciardi, and get their takes on what we're facing and what we're dealing with. Joe Biggs. Well, just think about this. Four days ago, DeRay McKesson was arrested in Baton Rouge protesting. Then a couple days later was the funeral for the Dallas police officers who died in that horrendous attack. And then 24 hours later, you have DeRay McKesson, the head of Black Lives Matter, in the White House meeting privately with President Obama, a man who lives in a home, like he said, by two philanthropists, James and Robin Wood, out of Baltimore. And they are on the board of the George Soros Foundation Open Society Institute. And he gave $35 million of Black Lives Matter alone just for Ferguson. Understand, this is all by design. This is a green light. With Facebook and Google, everybody's saying Black Lives Matter and don't say All Lives Matter, remember? And scratching that off the board. This is the signal for the weirdo communist rebellion that will then be administered by billionaires offshore who are tax exempt. Of course the billionaires offshore want to raise taxes under a Hillary thing to take our money and give it to them in a banker bailout. With a bunch of useful idiots burning their own neighborhoods down. Sorry, go ahead, Biggs. I mean, Netanyahu can't even go get a, a meeting with Obama. But you have a guy right now who's making $165,000 from the Baltimore School District. That's a lot of money. This guy is making $165,000 being given a home to live into by George Soros and his board members to go out and start civil unrest. They're going to be at the RNC and they're going to be at the DNC. We've seen emails, we've seen different reports where these guys are protesting. They are planning huge amounts of people to come out, show up, and disrupt the RNC. And I'm going to say this right now. The globalists have miscalculated. You think you're going to intimidate free speech and intimidate Americans by coming out and threatening people? And, and, and threatening folks, I'm coming there. I'm going to be on the street every day. And you, just because you're backed up by George Soros, the Nazi collaborator who just overthrew Ukraine, just because you think you're God, this isn't Egypt, this isn't Libya, this isn't Syria, this is, no, this is America. And you're going to find out, you little bastards and your filthy handlers, exactly what America stands for. Because we're not violent until you start it. But your time is coming to an end, filth. And the elite think that they're in control. They're elite maggots that think they would pull this crap in our country. Obama pushing total racial division and race war and killing random police. God help us. This is a criminal force we're dealing with. And I'm calling for everyone throughout government, corporations, private life, everywhere to resist this enemy with every legal means necessary. But take the gloves off. In the info war, we're going. Green light here. Fire at will in the info war, folks. It's going to be intense. There's going to be thousands upon thousands of people packed into this area. There's tons of police. Police from Austin are being shipped up to pull security in Cleveland and other departments around the country. I mean, they've even closed down the uh, airspace. Think about the balkanization where cops are going up there to protect people's free speech by groups won by the White House that want to kill cops. I mean, this is so, this is the takedown of America by a bunch of goddamn Benedict Arnolds. But what's been going on? What's been leading up to this? Al Sharpton and Obama all calling for the federalization of police. We're going to have two huge events where we have paid protesters coming in to spark civil unrest. They're going to say local police can't do this and they want to bring in federalized police and it's going to be martial law all over the place. Civil emergency. It's all a big demonstration. And when that happens, Obama can go for a third term. And I'm telling you, I used to hear this years ago, I thought I'll never try it. God, who, who knows? They got a bunch of social justice warriors that want to see anybody that's a libertarian or patriot freaking hung. I mean, they hate free speech. They hate everything. They, they, a bunch who live in this free, open country who had ever worked a day in their lives. They don't even care that Bernie Sanders voters had all their votes stolen. They just don't care. They are more immoral trash. But think about this. Ohio is an open carry state. Without a permit, you can go in an open carry. And now the new Black Panther Party, which is known as a terrorist organization, is coming out there with machine guns, 
with sawed-off shotguns, with all this. They've openly come out and said they're going to be coming out there. Are they going to be attacked for having guns? No. Is this going to be a, an opportunity to use as a false flag to blame it on the right wingers, so to say? Oh, this is it's history. going to be interesting. I mean, I'm telling you, this week coming up is going to be the most intense time in, in well, years. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you right now, I'm not scared. I am excited to be able to join the ranks of our forebears that stood up against tyrants and bullies and trash and against the British Empire and against the Mexican dictator Santa Ana. And I mean, I am so honored to stand against the hordes of Mordor and just the trash. And I ask all Americans for their race, color, and creed that stand for free speech of the First Amendment to understand this is your chance to be involved in an epic battle for the Republic. Because let me tell you, they're not just beta testing communist overthrow now. This is globalist megabank run communist doctrine. They are, they are thinking about going operational with a full overthrow of the country. I mean, Obama turning the lights off, folks. I mean, I mean, coming after the guns, huge inner city population starving to death, you know, and just, just demanding martial law, creating total race war. I mean, this is unbelievable. Think about all the Bernie or bus people, the people that donated thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars of Bernie Sanders' campaign to defeat Hillary Clinton, and he has now bowed down, sold out to the establishment, who he said he was anti-establishment, that money goes to her. Look at all right. those people that are going to come out, to show up to RNC and to the DNC. They're going to be angry. They're going to now start voting for Trump. I guarantee you're going to see a huge And that's turnout. why they need to make some type of racial issue early on in the Trump deal and some type of riot. And the word is from Roger Schoen and others, and we also have this from the police. I'm going to stop right there. So this is the breaking news. We already knew this was happening. It's happening now. When Hillary wanted to demonize Bernie, she would have people attack Trump in Bernie outfits. They're going to have people in Bernie outfits attack Trump supporters and free speech supporters, anybody who's white, to make it racial. Because it's okay if you're, you know, if you're another color and you're taking white. That's, that, that's all right. To make it where Bernie supporters see the fight and the clash and just think, there's a clash between Bernie. Bernie's already thrown the talent. There's a clash between Bernie and the Trump. I'm against Trump. Be nice to my Bernie. Because let me tell you, I'm Bernie. Listen to you. Listen to Bernie to tell the truth now. What happened here is I was sold out to Hillary many years ago. Never worked till I was 40. I promised you all these free goodies because we want you dependent. All right? I told you not qualified. Warmonger Goldman Sachs, biggest corporate candidate ever. The truth is I sold you out. Now I think you're dumb. We're going to have our people dressed up like they support me. And then they're going to sit there and attack everybody. And when the Trump people fight back, It'll all be about how the Bernie people hate Trump. That's to manipulate you, dumbasses, all right? <laughs> Think about all the money, though, that Hillary would have not gotten going out and campaigning. The amount of money that they use Bernie, they use Bernie as a pawn, I think, to get money from these groups of people who would have never given money to Hillary, knowing the end game would be that he would, you know, pass a war chest for Trump, give out, and then use that more money to go against Trump because that's all we've seen in the mainstream media is how everyone is attacking him, using this racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, and you know, Islamophobic narrative nonstop, shoving it down people's throats. And every time I go out in the street and I ask people, why don't you like Trump? It's the same thing, sexist, racist. I'm like, because they want to feel from? good though. They're taught you're good as long as you declare this. No, you're being taught this. So so anybody that wants freedom can have this projected on it, and then you just piss your pants and say you can't support it. Anthony Gucciardi. No, exactly. It's sad. <clears throat> Once again, the media is hijacking everything. They hijack the narrative. They tell you that you're supposed to care about things. They bring up the whole race issue. They bring up all of this. The truth is, I don't think people are buying it. I'm not buying it. And what's funny is, I do think black lives matter, and I think everyone in this room knows that black lives matter. But the issue is that when you say all lives matter, then you're racist. That is absolutely absurd. It's completely mentally ill. If I was a doctor looking at this society, this country, as the media shows it, I would declare it completely mentally to ill. To say it's racist, to say all lives matter, like Martin Luther King, is taking not being racist and saying it's exactly. racist. What genius. So it's mental illness at the highest degree. If you ever talk to a crazy person before, they'll just say the opposite. You know, you come up to, how are you doing? Stop being mean to me. Right? Just totally mentally ill. I'd like to work this, this out with you. Shut up! Yeah, this society is mentally ill. It is deeply, deeply mentally ill. But the good thing is, I don't think people are buying into it. Just look at the uh, political correctness BS. The Redskins, right? They, oh, the Redskins. So many Native Americans are being offended by this team, okay? Maybe even is offensive, but guess what? 96% said they weren't offended by it. Of natives. Uh, yeah. But natives. look, look, exactly. So let me ask you this joke. question, Anthony. What are they thinking then? Because it isn't working in the real world in their own weird cult programming. Though they keep doubling down, what are they doing? 
70% of Americans say they are pissed off and angry about this country and where it's heading. Over 60% say that it's never going to get better. Like, the stats are insane. There's 19 stats you can look up. Like, 50% of Americans just hate everything. People are depressed. People are angry. People are frustrated. They hate the system. So what the media does is they have a unique opportunity. They have the opportunity to funnel all that hatred and anger, which is actually against the establishment where everyone bought into it and lost. They got the raw deal. They ordered a steak. They got a bloody chunk of meat. They got the raw deal. So the media then takes that unfiltered rage and hatred and puts a magnifying glass on these little micro issues. It's all a distraction. It's they all focus a all the rebellion against the foreign occupation, the globalist, all their scams, NAFTA, GATT, everything, onto random local police who most of them are quitting and freaking out so crime rates are exploding and the cops are like, I'm out of here, screw this. I mean, you can see the plan to bring the country down. No, gonna I just get, got chills. See, we get drawn into it, though. We get drawn. We have to cover it instead of all the other stuff. We get drawn into it, which is fine because we have to talk about it. But now, oh, it's Black Lives Matter versus police versus white people. That's and the absurd. average childlike person, the average liberal, is arrested development, thinks they're an intellectual. I mean, literally, it's like make believe, like they're Wonder Woman or Superman. They're not. They just think it's being covered. They're getting attention. They're winning. When instead, total balkanization is being created and it's legitimizing a police state they're going to bring in. It's going to make you want the one you just lost. You know, it is very, very sad. The truth is, I think black lives do matter, as I said in that video, and as we all agree. <clears throat> but I also think all lives matter. And if I'm a racist for saying that, that is a very, very absurd, disgusting state of affairs. And it, it, the point that I'm trying to make and the point that Alex, I believe, is making that video is that this is a very, very sad funneling of the distrust of government, distrust of the system. We've been told that if we go to school and get good grades and go through college and be a, a good worker drone and sit in your cubicle, you'll have a white picket fence and you'll be happy someday. But that's not how it worked out at all. And there's real discrimination. I've been uh, uh, mistreated by police many times in my life. I went to Utah, went up to the NSA, if you guys remember years ago, and they basically said their dog was going to rip my uh, testicles off and eat them. And that they're, I'm lucky the dog didn't get me because he was hungry. Okay. So I've had cops mistreat me and there's real discrimination. There really, really is. There's real racism, but it's not about white people versus black people, cops versus whatever. That is an insane division, and we're falling for it if we let the media and the so-called establishment hijack the narrative to where it's all about race baiting. It's all about um, just how we're bad, okay? And now in kindergarten, they say, this is a black person. This is a white person. And the kids are like, what? I didn't, I didn't even notice the difference. This is a black person. It's absurd. That's real racism. I'm against real racism. I think all lives do matter. And I hate the division, and I'm tired of it, and it's stupid. We need to go back to preschool and relearn some uh, ethics and understanding of uh, what racism really is. And we'll talk about a little bit more about trigger warning in the next segment, too. I have some things to say on that. But first, we're going to blitz through one more call. Alex in Mexico says he's an ex-Bernie Sanders supporter. What is on your mind? You've got about 30 seconds. Uh, hello. Well, I used to... Um well, first, let me say that Hillary Clinton is a very dangerous person for the whole world, and I think she would just eat her young. And I would, uh, I used to support Bernie because he was against TPP with uh, completely erases um, sovereignty of nations. And uh, the last uh, days, I've been hearing uh, Trump speak, and he's against. The, I think he's against TPP. And what I like about Trump um, is that he wants to cancel NAFTA. With um, that, actually, uh, is seen as a good. Right on. We'll talk NAFTA. about it as soon as we get back, and I have some thoughts about Bernie as well. And uh, I hear your points 100. percent We'll be right back. This is the Alex Jones Show. We are back. I apologize to the caller. We don't have much time at all, and I wanted to hit on a few points. But uh, just to address your point, you were talking about being a Bernie ex Bernie Sanders supporter. And you said, you know, it seemed like you support a lot of things he did or stood for, but obviously there were some issues. I think that a lot of what Bernie stood for was good. 
Okay, not in the economic sense, but he was against NSA spying. Um, he was against a lot of the so-called intrusive federal government acts that were going on, which is, is kind of funny, right? Because everyone talks about how he, he's for big government like that. But I could see the appeal of the Bernie wave. I could see the appeal. It's anti-establishment in many regards. It's just the little things that people don't notice because everyone loses themselves to the details, as always, as we've talked about. But I just wanted to remind you, InfoWarsLife.com, DNA Force is 25% off, which is a very large percentage. Uh, it's been a very, very long time since we did a deal like that for DNA Force. Uh, DNA Force has BioPQQ, which is backed by over 180 clinical studies. It's the real deal. It is. If you go and look at InfoWarsLife.com, click on the supplement facts panel, look at the ingredients and actually research each one or scroll down for the description and learn what is in DNA Force. And that's pretty much all you need to know. I mean, this is the most expensive product that is made on InfoWars Life. Just one batch of the really, really good patented stuff costs $30,000. It's not a joke. It's very expensive. The margins are not very good. Uh, but it is a very, very powerful product with CoQ10, mega, mega antioxidant that lasts a very long time. But the BioPQQ... The science behind it is absolutely 100% absurd. What I wanted to talk about now, though, is, you know, The Atlantic had a pretty good piece called The Coddling of the American Mind, and it talks about things like trigger warnings, talks about the political correctness. You know, college campuses, people are, are so offended. You see, they have higher quality problems now. If we were to look back in history, the problems have shifted. You see, it used to be that you were working in a coal mine and your number one concern was getting black lung or not having enough money for food and that, that your family could die. You could, you could lose your life because you weren't working enough and you weren't making enough money and you could get black lung in the coal mines or the breaker boys, boys sorting through the coal and inhaling all in their lungs. Well, now our problems are that our feelings were hurt from someone's microaggression in school. Oh, or that you saw something online that offended you. That is our quality of problem now. And I wanted to show some images just to, just to remind us. Guess what? You don't have problems uh, if you're offended by microaggressions and, and you feel like you were triggered by something someone said. You don't have problems. Real problems are sitting in a trench afraid that you're going to die getting trench foot where your foot is rotting off. You have to rip your boot off and it looks like a disgusting mass on your foot is growing. And the most painful thing you can imagine, uh, real problems are living in a situation where you're fearful for your life, uh, where you're starving, um, where you are being abused deeply. Talk about the article I saw today where they found 38 slaves who are being abused and chained and tied up in some country in, in Europe. I mean, we're not experiencing real problems when we talk about and cry about the microaggressions. And I talk to people in my daily life and they say, I need a safe space. This is offending me. This is not just jokes. People say this kind of stuff. And I just want to remind them the images you're seeing on screen, World War II, uh, World War I, the coal miners of the 19th century. Those people faced real problems. There's still many real problems in the world today, but these are not real problems. These are nitpicking, high-quality problems, the most absurd level of sloth that we have reached where we can lounge around and cry about microaggressions because guess what? There aren't other problems to complain about when you don't look at the real issues. I'm Anthony Gucciardi. This is The Alex Jones Show, and thank you so much for watching. Alex will be back tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. Please don't get triggered between now and then, and remember you don't have real problems if that is your issue.